Welcome to tonight's legislative agenda. I would like to start the meeting as we will going forward reading the land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that we are on unceded land of the Spokane people and that these lands were once the major trading center for the Spokanes as they shared this place and welcome other area tribes through their relations, history, trade, and ceremony. We also want to acknowledge that the land holds the spirit of the place through its knowledge, culture, and all the original people since time immemorial. As we take a moment to consider the impacts of colonization, may we also acknowledge the strengths and resiliency of the Spokanes and their relatives as we work together making decisions that benefit all. May we do so as one heart, one mind, and one spirit. We are grateful to be on the shared lands of the Spokane people and ask for the support of their ancestors in all relations. We ask that you recognize these injustices that forever change the lives of the Spokane people and all their relatives. We agree to work together to stop all acts of continued injustices toward Native Americans and our relatives. It is time for reconciliation. We must act upon the truths and take actions that will create restorative justice for all people. May we stand to the Pledge of Allegiance. Spokane Arts was going to present a poet tonight. Is Mary with us? Hi, Hi come on down. Good evening. You can pull that mic down there. Okay, go. thank you. Hi. Um, I just want to say good evening, and it's um, it's an honor to be here, and hello to everyone else. Um, I'm going to read a poem called Making of a Moat. It was a commission for the Catholic Charities Mother's Day brunch, and I never made it, so I'd like to read it tonight. Making of a Moat. Mothers build sandcastles with buckets on loan. Exchange heavy loads of for pails of soft hope. Watch it slip through the fingers. Mothers stand at high tide to watch as waves weave our shore a blanket, enough room to hold us all. Mothers who are daughters who know brothers who only come out at night. Mothers who build without buildings, no maps for their moats, shelters to guard the softest side of their sons their daughters. Mothers forget themselves, scoop deeper into the sea. Mothers who make more out of nothing, resourceful, useful guilt. Sand castles constructed out from under shame, out of shoestring and shovel, broken goggles, lost lonely cup. Mothers will always build more with one more bear one more crash to bear. Mothers, your hard-won wisdom gives you this knowing. We choose it all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Fister, we call the roll, please. Council President Wilkerson. Present. Council Member Cathcart. Present. Council Member Bingle. Here. Council Member Dillon. Here. Council Member Klitsky. Present. Let the record reflect that Council Member Zappone is absent but will be joining us later. Thank you. We're going to go to open forum and my assistant was getting me the list. So I believe it's Jay McPherson. Yvonne Polinski and John Alder are our first three. Okay. Thank you, Madam President. 
I'm Jay McPherson with, uh, from Born and Raised in Spokane, Washington. Resolution 81 in September of last year was passed 4 to 3. Felt it was a disrespectful resolution toward Bible believing Christians, and I felt it was dishonest. I'm still waiting for a well deserved apology. I admire the burden of responsibility that weighs on each member of this council. I don't feel I would want to carry such a heavy burden, but I feel it is important no council members shirk the responsibility of honesty as heavy as the other burdens might become. To me, there is no obscurity, there can be no doubt, distrust has been earned. Two of the four who voted to renounce Mayor Woodward for attending the wrong worship service have termed out. The other two were the sponsors of the blatantly dishonest and insulting resolution. I remain saddened and angered over the deceit and the damage to religious freedom and the shame such underhanded politics bring to our city. Congratulations, the political scheme that was Resolution 81 worked, but it cost trust. Distrust has been earned. I'm not talking about the lack of trust when you just meet somebody and you don't know them. Distrust is when there is a track record of dishonesty. Distrust is when you expect somebody to use their deceit to advance their agenda. We're not white supremacists. I suspect that worship service happened to be more racially diverse than Spokane in general. But that didn't fit your political narrative and dishonest scheme. We did not spew hate and bigotry, but it felt you did when you sponsored a resolution that lied about us from beginning to end. You say we pushed fear and violence, but there was none of that, quite the opposite. Testimony after testimony expressed that, but you went along with the dishonest narrative that got you what you wanted. It's not too much to expect the council to correct tremendous errors of judgment and deceit and issue an apology for the entire resolution and admit it was full of lies and baseless insults. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Please, no point of order. Point of point order. order. No, point of order. no clapping. Yvonne, thank you. Uh, Sorry, Council President, um, do you want to um, share the rules one more time Let's just as we transition? One more time. Thank you, Councilman Bingo. There is no clapping or booing. All comments will be addressed to the Council President. It's also if you grab the blue agenda from outside. In the future, we will have the council rules posted on the screen for you to read while you wait for legislative session to start. Thank you. I don't know if you guys heard the news, but a man was found dead at a bus stop in Spokane last night. And according to the Spokane police, the man found the man was found on North Ash and West Northwest Boulevard and was most likely homeless. SPD said that there's no signs of foul play and his death was most likely caused by drugs. That was the official news report that was put out. Most likely homeless and most likely caused by drugs. That is speculation with prejudice, not confirmed with facts, but I'm sure it wouldn't surprise most of us here if his death isn't properly investigated by our local corrupt police department because of the fact that they mislabel them or that they they label them as homeless and druggies. It is shameful that the police dehumanize deceased members of our community in such a way. Even if substance abuse were in his system, at some point we have to admit that the people that are dying on our that people are dying on our streets because of inadequate resources like housing and access to mental health. These temporary warming shelters are not sustainable housing options either, and the ones we have are just not enough. Over 200 churches were asked to open their doors during this dangerous weather front that we had, and only four agreed to do so. It's shameful that our state gives $118.5 million per year to the Israeli military, out of which Spokane alone gives $3.5 million per year to fund a genocide instead of using that money to help its most vulnerable residents. It's been estimated that $20 billion could solve the homelessness problem in America, and that breaks down to just 400 million per state. So if Washington stops sending Israel $118.5 million every year to murder innocent men, women, and children, imagine what we could do with that money locally. We could potentially solve homelessness in our own state. We could build up our own programs that are struggling with funding. And honestly, it's embarrassing. 
It's embarrassing that our tax dollars instead are going to fund an incompetent local police force and a murderous apartheid state overseas. Thank you for your testimony. Next up, we have John Alder, then Julie Garcia, then Cliff Winger. Today is the third anniversary of the Treaty of Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons Conference uh, signing. Actually began 2017 and opened signature. In tw January 22nd, 2021, received the 50th state, making it official. There are now currently 93 countries that have signed it, 69 have, rat have ratified it. Some con local connections to this nuclear era include Hanford building a Nagasaki bomb, later causing pollution into the Columbia River, which flows into our Spokane River. We've also had a uranium mine called Midnight Mine up in the Spokane Reservation that's caused the same health problems as you hear about in Navajo mines. And people are now in clinics getting treated for that. Also, there was bomb, bomb tests in Marshall Islands causing many people to still to this day be sick and have to come to Washington State and have Marcus Riccelli, a third district, uh, district representative, help get a bill passed so they get the medical help they need. Now, something else good did happen. On October 22, October 22 we did sign a nuclear-free ordinance that was in Washington. Is it possible to have, have a meeting with our, any member of council discuss how enforcement of this ordinance is going? Also, maybe pass the ordinance resolution to convince Senator Murray, Cantwell, and Representative Rogers to make the U.S. sign the, the TPNW. Veterans for Peace meets the second Wednesday each month in the Saranac for third floor learning room at 645. We invite anybody from city council to come to that meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Julie Garcia, Cliff Winger, and Eugene Knowles. Good evening, council, council president, new council members. My only ask of you today is that you come out and see what scattered site shelters look like. That's my whole reason for being here. We are currently running four scattered site shelters. And at those scattered site shelters, two of them run 24 seven, which means we are smack dab in the middle of neighborhoods and providing homeless services in their space. Our neighborhoods are providing the mill trains and volunteers. They have embraced this scattered site model. So I'd really like to invite all of you out to come and see what it looks like when we invite the community to be part of the solution. The second thing I want to talk about is I'm having trouble finding where I find information about 311. Who answers the calls at the other end of 311? Because I would like to send them some fig tree directories. Jules Helping Hands is a homeless service provider. We cannot address every crisis in our city, and that's what's happening currently, is we are addressing things that are outside of our scope of work. So if somebody could send me an email or let me know who that person is, I'd like to help them get good resources out to the community. And I also would like to thank you for appointing Dawn Kinder. She has helped provide good navigation to homeless service providers through this emergency. So thank you. Thank you. Next up is Cliff Winger, then Eugene Knowles, then Cheryl Stone. Good evening, Council uh, President Wilkerson and Council members. Uh, my name is Cliff Winger, and I'm here on behalf of my Shadow Hills neighborhood to give you a resolution that was unanimous, unanimously passed last Thursday concerning our neighborhood plan. Because of the comprehensive plan update process, our neighborhood is concerned that we will again be refused to receive our neighborhood plan, which we have been seeking under council members Burke and Fagan five years ago, as well as last year under Judge Beggs when he was council president and at our town hall meeting last September. In 2011, the city council adopted resolution 2011-0100, establishing the neighborhood planning process. The neighborhood plans are designed as a way for neighborhoods to identify their issues and solutions 
solutions and focus on planning for specific neighborhood needs. 25 of our 29 neighborhoods have completed their neighborhood plans. The Shiloh Hills Neighborhood Resolution, uh, which I'll give to the City Council Clerk today, has more information concerning issues that our neighbors are addressing. Shiloh Hills was created through seven annexations, and we have no city amenities with considerable acreage of raw land. The patchwork development of our neighborhood is not compliant with the visions, value, goals, and uh, policies contained in our current comprehensive plan. Currently, 578 new dwelling units are being built in Shiloh Hills, which is good, and seven-acre parcel zone BC 55 feet is in the SEPA process uh, for more apartments, increasing Shiloh Hills residents by more than 1,700 people. Currently, development is hodgepodge. Our request is for you, our representatives, uh, to follow through on the 2011 City Council's promise that was affirmed last year. Our neighborhood's requesting to have a neighborhood plan this year. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next up is Eugene Knowles, Cheryl Stone, and then Rebecca Durfee. Yes, uh, Eugene Knowles, living here in Spokane for since uh, 2010. Uh, uh, my problem in coming up is always that two minutes, you can't do it, so I'll try. Um, I was at the uh, track shelter uh, over the uh, couple weeks ago. Uh, I usually go out uh, once, twice a year to track, once a year to uh, UGM, and uh, on the paper that I passed out there, there's, I've got seven shelters here in Spokane, I'm sure there are more, but um, in this short moment, I just want to make out a couple of points here about the types of shelters that we have here, uh, or the types of shelters that are used nationwide, hotels, the so-called navigator shelter, the case management shelter, the programming shelter, the low barrier shelter, the overflow shelter, and the emergency shelter. At the bottom is the red stuff, streets, alleys, tents, and camps, and the river. The ones at the bottom have come across, come, come about because not enough attention and effort has been made to build up the proper shelters. So um, because there's only two minutes here, I'm going to let it go except to say that the, the Trent shelter needs to be closed. It doesn't need to be closed until a proper shelter is built. I'm a formal construction worker, 40 years. You're not going to get a shelter built properly in less than two years. Thank, Thank you. you. Next up is Cheryl Stone, then Rebecca Durfee, and Scott Ward. Good evening. Um, First of all, thank you all for being here. I would like to specifically thank Council President Wilkerson, Council Member Bingle, and Council Member Zappone for assembling a panel to discuss what's a very <clears throat> emotional, passionate, contentious situation that's happening between uh, the war in Israel and Palestine. Um, I'm here to support the resolution that developed from the panel that was assembled from all Excuse sides me, of Cheryl? the- Are you speaking to the resolution tonight? Yes. That's okay, what I'm so we're in open forum. Okay. I'm going to put you on that list, okay. and then when that comes up, we will have you speak oh, have to, to that. I remember what I just said. I know it. <laughs> I didn't prepare. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. Rebecca Durfee is online. Rebecca, I am going to unmute you. Go ahead. I'm, hello. Um, so my name is Rebecca Durfee. I am actually calling to speak in support of the Spokane Public Schools upcoming bond and levy renewal. Is this an appropriate time to do that? Or is there another point in the agenda where I need to speak on that? Rebecca, thank you for calling. But the district has asked us to remove that resolution as of tonight. It will be coming back when they bring it forward. So we are not taking testimony. Well, point of order. If we're yeah. removing it from our agenda, then she would be eligible to talk about it. In open we'll, forum. we'll go ahead and support. Yes. Oh, I'm okay to go. I'm okay to speak. Go ahead and speak, please. Okay. So my name is Rebecca Durfee. I'm speaking in support of Spokane Public Schools upcoming bond and levy renewal. I am a parent as well as a personal contractor with the school district. 
I just wanted to speak a little bit about what that is. The bond is part of a 25 year master plan to restore and invigorate all of the buildings of our school district, including updating elementary schools like Madison, who don't have air conditioning and Gary Middle School, which is the only middle school in the district that hasn't been updated. The 2024 bond is less than half of previously requested bonds due to the recession and the school district knows we're all pinching pennies here. So the school district has worked really hard to narrow down the bond for the schools that need it the most in order to not raise taxes. The levy wouldn't raise taxes either as it is a replacement levy and it would keep the after school programs we have and maintain nurses and behavior specialists and schools, fund custodians and librarians, create resources for our special education programs and allow us to maintain smaller class sizes. It also increases access to advanced placement courses and offers more elective classes. This is one initiative we all benefit from every day. This levy provides funding for sports, clubs, music programs, STEM programs, and other important activities that keep kids safe, occupied, and growing outside of school rather than in front of screens or without adult supervision. The levy keeps our schools cleaner, safer, and more efficient. I have worked in both schools slated to be updated with this bond and in schools already updated, and I believe the bond is well worth our tax dollars. My own child is an SPS student, and we have benefited from services funded by the levy, and I can tell you it makes a tremendous difference. In conclusion, I want to encourage you to support both the bond and levy in this upcoming election, and when kids are better taken care of, our communities are stronger. Things the levy and the bond offer will trickle down for generations to come and benefit Spokane as a whole. So ballots are due on February 13th, and please vote yes for kids. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Cheryl Stone, then, or I'm sorry, next up is Scott Ward, then Mickey Hatfield, then Sherry Barnett. I'm Scott Ward uh, from Spokane Valley, and I second what the previous speaker said about the levy and bond. Um, I'm going to read something from Beyond Vietnam, MLK's speech, April 4th, 1967. A true revolution of values will soon look uneasily on the glaring contrast of poverty and wealth. With righteous indignation, it will look across the seas and see individual capitalists of the West investing huge sums of money in Asia, Africa, and South America, only to take the profits out with no concern for the social betterment of the countries and say, this is not just. It will look at our alliance with the landed gentry of South America and say, this is not just. The Western arrogance of feeling that it has everything to teach others and nothing to learn from them is not just. Our only hope today lies in our ability to recapture the revolutionary spirit and to go out into a sometimes hostile world in declaring eternal hostility to poverty, racism, and militarism. Then, in his Where Do We Go From Here, Chaos or Community speech, he said, a nation that will keep people in slavery for 244 years will thingify them, make them things. Therefore, they will exploit them, and poor people generally, economically. And a nation that will exploit economically will have to have foreign investments and everything else. It will have to use its military might to protect them, all of these problems are tied together. MLK also said, our bombs abroad explode at home. Council should weigh in on the devastation of US imperialism around the world, but they should just do so in a historically informed way. There's the sentiment that council shouldn't have said anything about um, you know, issues outside of this country. They should, they should just do so in an informed way. We have rising homelessness, unaffordable housing, medical debt, educational debt, and a planet that is suffering under the violence and destruction of colonialism, capitalism, and US imperialism. And yet we give over a trillion dollars a year to the war machine, a trillion dollars to violence and destruction while people in this city struggle. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Mickey Hatfield, Sherry Barnett, and then Andrew Cowley. Thank you. Just simply put, I would like to uh, state that some of the changes that have been noted for um, this open forum uh, are quite unacceptable. Uh, we demand are, that you keep me. an open excuse, forum. Excuse me, are you speaking towards our rules tonight on open forum? Our yes. council rules, uh, you'll have to speak at that. This is not the time for that. You can speak okay. when it comes before us. Thank you. We'll make a note of that. Next up is Sherry Barnett, then Andrew Cowley, then Dennis Flynn.
I'm Sherry Barnett, and I live in Spokane, council president, and all members of the council. It's a new year, and a new council, and we have new hopes. And it was my understanding that we were going to try to make this for everybody. But I have found that it's been very difficult, even if I come at 5 o'clock, to be able to speak in an open forum. And that it's no longer... Okay, I won't carry on about open forum okay, anymore. Thanks, Sherry. But um, the, the great thing about this nation is it was founded on our Constitution. Everything is founded on the Word of God. It is founded on faith in God and in mankind. And a nation that's wise will obey his laws. I find that there are many things that we do need to change in this city that, that we are not protecting and living according to those laws. And what that guy said about the rule against Mayor Nadine Woodward is true. There are two different sets of values going on in this nation and in this city. And we should have a city that honors everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Andrew Cowley, then Dennis Flynn, then Larry Andrews. Hi. Um, I was actually going to speak on the uh, proposed changes uh, to the rules of open forum. Um, if I uh, could be added to that list, please. Okay, at that time. Thank you. Thank you. Dennis Flynn, and then uh, Larry Andrews, and then Tare Bear Eagle. Hi, Council. Congratulations. Okay. Dennis Flynn, I live near St. Charles. I have presented and written the council multiple times about maintaining decorum and rules during the council meetings. Specifically, I've called out the perception of a two-tiered bias determination on who and what subject matter is allowed to hold up signage when at this podium and who and what isn't. Who and what subject matter is inter interrupted during open forum testimony is needing to defer to an upcoming legislative agenda and item and who and what isn't interrupted. Who and what unrelated subject matter is allowed to testify during an agenda item and who is interrupted? Which citizens' viewpoints in the gallery are allowed to interrupt the citizen testifying at this podium via the silent speech of standing? And which council members are not denounced when they deliberately bear false witness, whether it is deceiving about health clinics and schools or making misleading statements about a denouncement not being political, even though it's made smack dab at the end of a campaign right before our citizens receive their ballots? My previous communications to you have gone unheeded, but I'm hopeful that the change of leadership will allow you to rest back a just semblance of order and equal opportunity for citizens and citizen engagement with our elected leaders. I implore you to equally enforce your own rules. Thank you. Thank you. Larry Andrews, Tare Bear Eagle, and then Tracy Bloom. Thank you for that. Tare Bear Eagle. Um, I would uh, like to yield my time as I'd rather be here to speak on Proposition 2024-009, and I am, um, fuck, I know I'm already added to this, but if I could just like to make sure you're able to speak on that. Can I ask you to speak closer into the mic a little bit, please? Thank you. Resolution 009, is that what you wanted to speak on? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's not the time at this point. We're still in open forum. Yeah, I know that. That's why I'm Great. trying to say that. Make yes, sure I've added you to that, that time resolution. Is right. okay. mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you. Tracy Bloom, and then August, and then Andrea G. Uh, August. Uh, I just wanted to speak on the forum that I didn't take. Okay. okay. On the resolution about council rules? Yes. Okay. On, uh, also, on 003 and 003. Great. You're on for those. Andrea G. <coughs> Let me 
check online. Andrea, if you're online, can you raise your hand by pressing star three? Here she is. Awesome. Hello, um, council. Thank you guys all for being here. Uh, my name is Andrea Rose Gallardo. Um, I am the co-founder of Mac Movement. That's music, art, and creativity movement. We set up outside every Monday for free food with a side of free speech because we believe everybody has the right to f food and you know free speech. It's um, something we all deserve. And we just want to make a safe space that everybody can come and be heard. So every walk of life um, can give you their testimony because that's what we're here to do. Um, I'm a descendant. Um, I not only reside here in Spokane, but more importantly, I'm a descendant of the Spokane and Coeur d'Alene tribe. Um, so I feel like it's my, you know, also my honor and um, duty to um, speak for the people. Um, so um, I also um, wanted to just give a shout out to uh, SCAR and PSL um, for also coming out there these last few weeks um, when we set up out there in support of Palestine. And just to remind everyone that there's no honor in genocide. And say it again, no honor in genocide. And if you're supporting the other side, I really encourage you to to think about what you're doing and everything we do and say, you know, leaves a mark here on this earth that we all have to share. And it's all we've always been taught that this earth isn't ours, it's borrowed for future generations. Um, I also want to shout out to Cool Spokane and Yo Yo Spokane and uh, Jules Helping Hands and thank any you. other organization, all the little orgs that we've thank, all been coming you. together to uh, uh, make sure people are staying alive and thank keeping you. their fingers and toes. Thank you. Next up is Justin Holler, and then Zach Widmer, and then Katrina Love. Long time no see. Um, I'm wondering why it is that certain sorry, council members think that it's okay not to show up. At least when somebody had a new kid, they showed up via Zoom or they tried to show up, uh, which is a pretty reasonable excuse. Um, but when you make $46,700 a year or more, I don't know what the inflation rate is, what, what the raise was for Council 2024. President, Council President, like point of, point of personal clarify. privilege. Yeah. Council Member Zappone's grandmother passed away just a couple hours ago, which is why he's not here with us um, currently. And so, But his intent is to join yes, us, so yeah. the commitment is there. Yeah. Thank you for that. Okay. Would you like to continue yeah. with your I, testimony? I, I, I used to do contract work where if I didn't, get, if I didn't show up, I got sued. And so I, I understand when you have family conflicts, it, 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 it's, it's, it sucks. But I had contract work it, where if I didn't show up, they couldn't just call another cashier or another somewhat qualified person. It was, it was different. Yes, this is an extreme case. I didn't know that. But this, this, the point still stands that if you're making $46,700 a year from the taxpayer's money, maybe make a little bit more effort, especially when you're uh, changing district maps and you can't even show up to that district map. That's pretty heinous. You know, and th there's a history of not showing up between so you, you, City Council just, President, sir, and a bunch sir, of other people. If you're speaking toward what's on the agenda tonight, did you sign I, up for that? I'm, speak, I'm speaking on the fact that people don't show up when they're paid to show up. Okay. People should show up when they're paid to show up. Thank you, but if you're speaking on the redistricting that's on the agenda tonight, so please keep your I'm comments not, to not Not specifically up. on the redistricting map, but that is heinous. I'm speaking on the ability to show up when you're trying to change something and you don't even have the audacity or the 
huevos, for lack of a better phrase, to show up and, and, and face the consequences of, of the thing that you, you, you proposed. That's pretty, that's pretty lackadaisical and pretty audacious in my opinion. Thank you. And stop wasting money. Next up is Zach Widmer, then Chris, uh, Katrina Love, and then George Taylor. And Zach is online. Go ahead, Zach, you're unmuted. Hi there, hey all. Um, uh, thank you for your time. I just want to um, talk about something real quick. Um, hey, today I was riding in my car with my child, and uh, we had to extend a nap from like 20 minutes to an hour. And anyway, um, I decided to drive on Woodside, the posted speed limit, and see what happened. And uh, sorry, I should say drive the posted speed limit and slow down at uh, uncontrolled intersections to check for other cars and pedestrians. Anyway. What happened was within the very first car that came behind me passed me on a residential street going 35 and just being, ah, I don't know. I just, to me, that was kind of crazy. Um, but it just goes to show what the expectation is around our residential roads right now. The expectation is that our residential roads are for cars and for people to get to where they are going and not for our residents to be able to enjoy. Um, one of the things that I'm really passionate about is my daughter is now six months old, and um, I would like her to be able to grow up in a world where she gets to see people outside her front yard. Um, but right now her front yard is in front of Woodside Avenue, which means that she will probably never see children outside in the front yard. Um, I go one street south, I go one street north, I see kids in the front yard. Um, one other point of order is um, that I know you guys are spending a lot of money to, uh, or wanting to spend a lot of money for parks. I think that's really great. But what I want to point out is that we already have a ton of public land available. We just have to be able to uh, have the political will to use it for our residents, not just for commutes. If we had a uh, 20 mile an thank hour you. road you, and thank okay, you. Your thank time you. is up. Next up is Katrina Love and then George Taylor. So I miss Love. And the reason I'm here is um, every Friday night I go out to downtown in the darkest areas and pick people up and bring them back to church to feed them, clothe them provide them with any resources that I might know throughout the community. And that's what I want to bring to the attention, is that I believe if we, instead of having individual resources trying to do the left hand, right hand, and all scattered through the community, if we work parallel together and bridge the gap between the heart, mind, and spirit, and work together as one, then we'll be able to save and provide many resources to our community as one, as a community, together, and hit the homeless population. And um, we will be able to transfer many lives into a positive community citizen versus people out on the streets. And my mission is to just show them how much they're loved and worth to guide them to their pathway of success. Thank you. And last up is George Taylor. Good evening, Council President. I'm a pastor at the All Saints Lutheran Church in Brown's Edition. I want to thank the Council for stepping up to a more robust program to shelter the homeless in Spokane. Far more robust than the previous administration allowed or planned for. I was a night supervisor at the old Cannon Shelter when it was being run by Jules Helping Hands. My boss just spoke here earlier. We had then an average of 95 guests every night, most of whom were sick. Men and women in the shelter, their dogs were allowed in. It was a very good program. And then it was shut down by the previous center. This new mayor, to her credit, has opened that Cannon Street shelter again 
and the Council has provided resources. I would second Julia Garcia's invitation for this Council, when they have time, to visit that Kennett Street shelter, the new one, and also the four, shel the four shelters that the churches have opened up. I do want to share, but yesterday, Sunday, I, w I conversed with a young man in front of the Ross Hours grocery store in Brown's Edition who claimed he was homeless, and he told me that the new Cannon Street shelter is only open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and is closed during the day. So guests at Cannon are on the streets until from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., to verify his story, I went down to Cannon Street Shelter right after we talked, and it was true. Four folks who had stayed there the night before told they were kicked out at 7 a.m., and they were trying to find a place to shelter for that day. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes open forum. We will now go to the appointment of Park Board, two, rep two reappointments. Do you want to read this, Ms. Terry? Two reappointments to the Park Board. Ger Jerry Sperling, second term, five-year term from February 7, 2024 to February 6, 2029. And Barbara Ritchie, second term, Spokane Park Board, five-year term fe from February 7, 2024 to February 6, 2029. Any comments? Councilmember Bingo. Uh, yeah, I've had the honor of working with the two of them the last uh, couple of years, and they've both been great advocates for Spokane and the uh, and the Parks Department. So I'm looking forward to their reappointment tonight, and I think they'll continue to be great uh, great members of the Park Board and and help contribute to our our park system. So thank you to both Jerry and Barb. I Councilmember Catcart. I was just going to add, I I too had the opportunity to serve with them when and during my year on the Park Board and. Fantastic members of that board and look forward to supporting uh, their continued work. Well, trifecta, I had the opportunity to work with them the last six months, and I have to echo both of my council members, and I look forward to working with them as the park board goes forward uh, with their plans for our community. Are we ready to vote? All those in favor of, can I do voice or you want? You we'll be a voice vote. All those in favor of reappointment, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any no's? Any abstention? The two reappointments are confirmed. We're going to jump around just a little bit since Council Member Zappone is en route to us from the hospital. Let's go ahead and do consent, Ms. Fister. Please. Reports, contracts, and claims. Number one, pre purchase of 36 inch and 40 two-inch ductile iron water main and fittings for the Ray Street Water Main Replacement Capital Project, $942,244.27. Number two, purchase of 3,000 gallons of hydroelectric oil from LJ Oil Company, Spokane Valley, Washington, re to replace hydro hydraulic fluid in Powerhouse 2 at the Upper River Dam, $61,770.30. Number three, multiple family housing property tax exemption conditional agreements with A. Payton Project LLC for the future construction of approximately 96 units at parcel number 35183.0507, commonly known as 10 North Post Street. B. Link Lofts LLC for the future construction of approximately 22 units at parcel number 35064.3614, commonly known as 516 West Cora Avenue. Number four, agreement between the Spokane Fire Department and Washington State Patrol to allow for reimbursement of wildfire mobilization costs. Number five, interagency agreement with Washington State Department of Commerce for middle housing grant award to assist in updating policies for middle housing development from date of execution through June 15, 2025, $75,000. Number six, contract authorizing the reimbursement of purchase costs to habitat, habitat for humanity when used to acquire homes for permanently affordable housing up to $500,000. Number seven, contract amendment and extension with JRP Integrated Solutions, LLC, St. John, Washington, to continue with broadband fiber consultant services through February 29, 2024, $50,000 paid out of division funds. Number eight, amended as assignment and assumption agreement of CHIP grant for utility infrastructure improvements at Liberty Park Terrace to modify the assignee to read Proclaim Liberty West, LLC. Number nine, contract amendment with KPFF Consulting Engineers, Seattle, Washington, for the laytop reach and bridge inspection and load rating analysis, $48,362.54, total contract amount, $205,362.54, 
Number 10, contract renewal with Intera Incorporated for emergency response software from January 1, 2024 to December 31, 2024, $67,124.38, including tax. Item number 11, report of the mayor of pending A, claims and payments of previously approved obligations, including those of Parks and Library through January 5, 2024. Total $4,120,795.23 with Parks and Library claims approved of their respective boards. Warrants excluding Parks and Library total $4,055,612.27. B, claims and payments of previously approved obligations, including those of Parks and Library through January 12, 2024. Total $10,714,810.90 with Parks and Library claims approved by their respective boards. Warrants excluding Parks and Library total $10,404,481.49. C, payroll claims of previously approved obligations through January 6, 2024, $9,952,908.01. Number 12, City Council meeting minutes for January 8 and January 11, 2024. Thank you. We have three speakers for the for the agenda tonight. First up is Justice for All, then Dennis Flynn, and then Meg Flatman. On the consent agenda, I want to talk about multifamily housing property tax exemption conditional agreements. <clears throat> Particularly, um, both for both of them, but on, on B, Chris Batten, um, and if you remember last year, there was calls for the chief of police to uh, resign for his uh, inappropriate relationship uh, that he had with commercial business property owners. Um, there's a lot of emails that you can read. Chris Batten was included in that. And so I just want to say when it comes down to access um, and who's able to actually get things done, people like Chris Batten don't have to come down and talk. Right? They, have, they already have access and they already get huge tax exemptions for things that maybe they shouldn't because, you know, they've also created a situation for our unhoused community that continues to worsen. Thank you. Thank you. Dennis Flynn. Hi, Dennis Flynn. I live near St. Charles. Regarding OPR 2024-0026, OPR 2024-0029, and OPR 2024-0030, I'm hopeful that this council will learn and heed the obvious results of the distortion of the market forces that occurs when regulations, such as the Growth Management Act, tax incentives to a specific cause, such as multifamily housing property tax exemptions, otherwise known as crony capitalism, and grant money from the next rung up in government, such as the middle housing grant, which always comes with strings to do it how they want it done instead of doing what's right in your community, you know, because they know better. That you learn the obvious results are what we end up with now, with inflated housing prices because you restrict the geographic area. Everyone rents because you take our money but give incentives to the wealthy who are funding the build. And you're doing it all because some grant comes with the predetermination that it's all a good idea, and here's the funding to help you prove it. You all, and I mean that from this council to the state legislature to the federal, think you know better, but at the end of the day, you all are no better than us to decide for ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Megra Flatman. Megra, you can hit star three. Go Thank ahead, you. Megra. Thank you. Um, on the consent agenda, item number three, it's very clear that Spokane needs more apartments and we need more housing. There's not enough housing. But just so we know who we're giving tax exemptions to. Um, numbers 3A concerning OPR 0026. Jordan Tampion uh, currently serves as an advisory member for the Downtown Spokane Partnership and he is part of the lead of investors who bought into Peyton Projects directly on the DSP website, they advocated for arresting homeless people even when there was no shelter capacity available, which meant that because of the Supreme Court decision, Martin v. Boise, that was illegal. The sit in line, no camping ordinance could not be enforced because there was nowhere for people to go to. They worked with, according to their website, uh, Mayor Woodward, Council Members Cathcart, and Council Member Bingle 
to illegally arrest homeless people despite this. And they even retained a law firm, Tonkin Torp LLP, in 2022 to draft a disagreement with Martin V. Boise. So just so we know who we're giving the tax exemption to and what they're doing with that money instead. The other uh, OPR 0027 for link loss, like we heard earlier, the owner of the architects or the owner of Rencorp Realty LLC is Chris Batten. He is one of many people that was part of the Spokane Business Owners Coalition of Emails that had direct access with police, former police chief Meidel and Chud Wendell. He advocated for relocating homeless people by force and quote committed he was committed to financially to support such a program of forced relocation that someone else in the email group requested when he said that we needed to grab the homeless people, put them on buses, get them out of the city, force them if they needed to be, and that they had the police backing to do it. So these tax exemptions are being given to people who help create problems. Thank you. Thank you. Any council commentary? Council no. member Bingo. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> specifically, since Chris Batten was called out, um, we're, we're tens of thousands of units short um, in Spokane County for housing that needs to get built. One of the best tools that we have at our disposal to help housing get built quickly is our multifamily tax exemption. And uh, Chris Batten is not um, somebody who is, uh, you know, very pro one way or the other. Um, Chris Batten was uh, effective in helping shape our housing policy under Mayor Woodward. Uh, he was also taxed or tapped uh, by Mayor Brown to be on her transition team. Chris Batten's just a guy in the community trying to help build housing that we all desperately need. And uh, so to Chris, I would say thank you for all of your efforts. Thank you for your investment in the city. Thank you uh, for building housing. Any other commentary? Hearing none, prepare to vote. Just voice Can I do voice? Yeah. Voice all in favor say aye. 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 Any no's? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Miss Fister. I might jump into 2024-11. Miss Fister, if you could go to the legislative to resolution 2411. Resolution 2024-11 of the City of Spokane, Washington, providing for the issuance and sale of a tax Taxable limited tax general obligation bond in the aggregate principal amount of not to exceed $1,175,339 to secure an interfund loan from the Spokane Investment Pool to finance the acquisition of equipment for the waste energy facility, fixing the date for maturity interest rate terms and covenants of the bond, establishing the provisions for repayment of the interfund loan established thereby, authorizing the sale and delivery of the bond to the city and providing for other matters properly relating thereto. There's one person signed up to testify, Dennis Flynn. Thank you, Dennis Flynn. I live near St. Charles. Um, this might just be my financial inacumen, but let me ask, do you think long-term capital needs for equipment that gets used up and ultimately needs replacement is something a competent city department manager should understand as far as expected lifetime and replacement costs? Why is the need for replacing front loaders and every other heavy equipment with a projected lifespan not already considered and planned for by building up a capital fund at the waste energy plant? And the same can be said for so many other departments with vehicles that have an expected lifespan. So now the city has to use general obligation bonds to float a loan to a specific department instead of that department anticipating the replacement schedule and charging those who use the equipment along the way up for the known and expected replacement. So now we, the citizens, will have to pay back a general obligation bond with interest, admittedly to ourselves, but where does that money come from anyway, from us? Tell yourself whatever you have to, but this is just another example of malfeasance. I'm tired of playing from behind. I'd like to see our city actually get ahead, which is a subject I'll be talking about later. Thank you. Council commentary? 
I'll just say uh, on this, uh, you know, the waste to energy facility is a, a great renewable uh, energy source for us here in the in the city. Uh, helps us convert garbage to energy that powers eleven thousand homes. Um, I'm happy to support this today, I, uh, Mr. Flynn. I hear what you're saying, and you know, we can always do better with uh, planning. But uh, this is a great resource for the for the city, and I'm I'm happy to support tonight. I have to echo that. Planning could have been done better. There has been a lot of missteps uh, in how we bring that forward to council. But going forward, we're looking better for better outcomes with an actual plan, which you hear us say, where's the plan? We haven't had one. But tonight, this is needed to keep that facility going, and it's a contribution to our community. I didn't know it could pop up. Yeah, I now I know. Thank you. Ms. Fisher, 2012, please. 2012. Resolution 2024 12, approving the appointment of Matt Boston as the Director of Finance, Treasury, and Administration, and as the Chief Financial Officer for the City of Spokane. I am absolutely honored to support this, having worked with Mr. Boston as the Finance Chair. Last year, his um, skills were valuable to us from council. I think they'll be valuable to the mayor. And he is a great bridge uh, of communication between both sides of the house going forward. Any other council there comments? There is uh, public testimony. There's one public testimony. Dennis Flint. Oh. Hello, Den Dennis. Come on down. <laughs> Hi, Dennis Flynn, live near St. Charles. Uh, I just want to quote Lisa Brown here for posterity. Balancing our budget is among my top priorities, and I am confident that Matt Boston is the person for the job. And a quote here from Matt Boston. Collaboration and in finding innovative solutions to the budgetary challenges Spokane has faced the past few years. Uh, Mr. Boston, I propose there are ample collaborative and innovative methods to addressing our budgetary challenges. Might I propose we actually identify areas where we cut when I worked at the library, which again was a lifetime ago, I made simple operational changes to the return process that made multiple seasonal jobs unnecessary while actually improving service. Why did no one else make the obvious changes I did decades prior? I suggest it's because there is never any requirement to cut budgets, but rather how to grow budgets at least as much as last year's budget plus an increased percentage. And mine was a very small budget for which I'm sure there are multitudes of operations in other city operations. I would advise that every single department head should be instructed to absorb a 5% personnel reduction, to be satisfied but not by getting rid of people, but simply by attrition and not filling the vacated positions. I would advise that you guide our city departments to engage in reality and resume, resume the age-old concept of public service as opposed to protect my fiefdom, of which an obvious example is the waste energy plant being honest with the citizenry and informing us that they really only recycle aluminum and tin and that the reality is that it's in the citizenry's financial interest to eliminate curbside recycling pickup and instead advise us on what and how to self-collect and drop off. Every week there are laments for unlimited amounts of more and more services, but your history in our city, Mr. Boston, makes you well aware there is no corresponding unlimited amounts of more and more tax revenue. So please help our city departments to mature out of the teenager stage of daddy will pay for it all and into the adult stage of how do we get it done with what we have. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Cathart. Yeah, I uh, uh, obviously I disagree with our, our past CFO quite a bit, but I respected her a lot, and I think um, you know she really um, did a lot to try to improve uh, things going on. And of course, Matt uh, with some conflicts there, but Matt was a part of those conversations, and he has been just an incredible. Um, collaborative individual, somebody who I also have a ton of respect for. And while I disagreed with our past CFO at times, I'm sure I'll disagree with Matt at some, Matt sometimes, um, but he is the right person, I think, for the new mayor to, to bring in. Um, he has demonstrated uh, that he can work uh, with anybody and everybody, um, and he's willing to really dig deep and look for solutions that are outside the box. Um, I've asked him for a number of things, and he's really dug in and looked to see what we could accomplish. And so I'm, I'm grateful to have uh, Matt Boston be put in this position, somebody I know we can all work with. And uh, just look forward. We've got some 
big, big things that we've got to, um, humps we've got to get over this year. And so look forward to working with him on, on making that happen. So. I can tell you we've all mutually not liked Matt on occasion because we did not like the advice he was giving us. But Councilmember Kat Carter and myself, a lot of the ideas you just spoke to came from Mr. Boston that we tried to implement over the last two years. So I expect to really see some better outcomes from that. Any other comment? Prepare to vote. Prepare to vote. Thank you. Next, resolution 2024-0013, Ms. Fister. Resolution 2024-13 regarding amendment to the City of Spokane Water and Hydroelectric Department fee and cost schedule. Uh, hold on one second while I pull that up. There is public testimony uh, from Dave M., who was online. Dave, if you would hit star three. Go ahead, Dave. You're unmuted. Hello. Could I ask what resolution is this again? This is resolution 2024-0013 regarding amendment to the City of Spokane Water and Hydraulic Department fee and cost schedule. Okay. Um, I believe I signed up for that in error. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I'll pass on that for okay. now. Sorry, I apologize. Thank you. D Dave, did you, which one had you intended to sign up for? I, I have them on for special budget ordinance uh, okay. resolution. Quite a, quite a few of them. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any commentary? Yes, Mr. Fingal. So this, um, the, the big change that happened here is we added our 5 eighths inch um, option to our fee and cost schedule, which was uh, you know, a response of all of our GFC discussions from last year. Um, and so it's not dealing with water rates at all. This is just fees and costs for, for tab fees. So that's it. Hearing none, prepare to vote. Thank you. On to 14. Resolution 2024-14, ratifying the mayor's January 11, 2024 executive declaration of emergency. All right, there is public testimony on this. Um, Megra Flatman online. Megra, go ahead and hit star three. You're unmuted, go ahead. Oh, thank you. Um, there's no agenda wording or summary background for this. So here it is. In 2022, City Council passed Ordinance C36281, which required the city from the mayor's office to publish a plan in advance, no later than September 30th, for emergency warming, cooling, et cetera, for the upcoming year. Being proactive and prepared is cheaper since there's no last minute emergency costs and it's also better for human beings knowing what we're gonna do, how we're gonna keep people safe. Mayor Woodward's administration never complied with this, including September of 2023, which meant that Mayor Brown inherited a humanitarian crisis with, as described on page 407 of this agenda, quote, life and death implication, uh, which necessitated this emergency declaration. As the mayor is authorized to award necessary contracts during emergency circumstances, uh, Mayor Brown was able to partner with Compassionate Addiction Treatment and Jules Helping Hands to open Cannon Street Shelter full-time and help with two churches for warming respectively. Both of these organizations have consistently provided life-saving services to vulnerable people while treating them with dignity. They are the experts I, by and large, and the money given to them is directly used to save lives. By contrast, Woodward's administration, who created emergent situations by refusing to comply with laws that this council passed, 
waited until they could award contracts without going through the request for proposal process. Uh, to the Guardians Foundation usually, especially in 2021 and 2022. It was not a one-off. Former director of NHHS Cupid Alexander warned Woodward's administration in 2021 that extending the Guardians contract without going through the mandated RF RFP process was the same reason that they just got audited. The Guardians contracts were eventually terminated after evidence of fraud and embezzlement surfaced. This Emergency declaration saved lives. Uh, the funding used went directly into saving those lives and not lining the pockets of political allies. The 180, I believe, additional shelter beds kept 180 people safe and warm. It still isn't enough. There's still hundreds, if not thousands, of people fighting this cold, uh, fighting hypothermia, fighting to keep their fingers and toes. But it's something, and it's good, and it's necessary, and we need it. Um, the Jules Helping Hands and Compassion Addiction Treatment are both still looking for volunteers for thank, shifts. Thank you. If thank anyone you, is able thank to. Thank you. Your time thank is you. up. <laughs> Any other council commentary? Councilman Bingle. We, we amended this earlier, correct? Yes, so we did. Which we included a date yes. on the emergency. February 6th, and we added a line that uh, just said that we concur with the mayor's um, purchases during that time. Absolutely. Yeah. Any other council commentary? Hearing none, prepare to vote. <coughs> Thank you. Now, Ms. Fister, if you'd like to take us back. Okay, if Eldon's here. We can oh, that's right, yeah, Eldon? Let's, 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 let's go, go, let's do Eldon. Ordinance C-36422, vacating the alley between 4th Avenue and 5th Avenue from the east line of Washington Street to the west line of Bernard Street. First reading held January 8, 2024. Good evening. We did have the hearing on this vacation originally back July 31st, uh, 2023. It was approved subject to conditions. The four conditions that we kind of had were uh, we retained easements for Comcast, Avista, and CenturyLink in the alley. We actually needed a plan to actually provide refuse service once we block off the eastern half of this alley. As you can see on the map up here, the, the alley adjacent to Bernard Street up there will have a building across the eastern half of that alley. So we'll no longer have actual straight access through that alley for refuse service. So the refuse trucks will have to come in off Weston Street. And to do that, it's going to be some additional cost. So we've got an agreement together between property owners as to how that cost will be handled when we actually provide that service. So that was one of the conditions, and we've been waiting for that agreement, and we do have that in place at this point in time. We'll actually have a final plan once we get through the building review when they come in with the building plans to really lay out exactly how trucks can kind of turn around on site and get in and out of Boyston Street. So that was a condition, and we also have closure work required at both Bernard Street and Weston Street, where the alleys are kind of turned into driveways at that point in time. So you've got to provide some curb and sidewalk to complete the closure. And the proponent also had to pay $110,000 for that right away. So they fulfilled all those conditions on here, so we're just ready for the final reading of that vacation. Be happy to answer any other questions. Any other questions? Councilor McCartcart. Just thank you for your diligence in this, and uh, I can't tell you to go home after this, but you really should go home <laughs> after this. You always stay much, much too late. So no problem. Thanks. Thank you. Thank yep. you. And there's one member of the public signed up to testify on this item, John Alder. Uh, sorry if I missed the answer. I really only had one question. Last time I testified a couple of weeks ago about how difficult it might be for people to get trash picked up, how they always been very convenient for the apartments in back of the Westminster as well as Westminster and the apartments next to it. You do have Washington Street, and, and you do have cars parked all in front on 4th and 5th for the apartments. So, again, I, I've not heard the question as answered as how the trash pickup will be taken care of. I think that's what Mr. Brown just spoke to that there have been conditions put on that? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
uh, the refuse department will actually probably bring a container truck in to pick up the actual uh, trash containers and then probably have to haul them out of the site on the Wason Street to then have them unloaded and bring them back. That's what's in place today, and we're hoping as part of any final plan that we get that we can maybe improve that a little bit as far as not making so many trips back and forth. But it does create an issue when you block off that alley at Bernard Street over there and you only have access to it coming off Wason Street. But we do have a plan in place, and hopefully we can improve it a little bit as we go through the process. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Prepare to vote. <clears throat> Thank you. Now we'll go back to the beginning of our legislative agenda. Resolution 2024, oops, emergency ordinances, sorry. Special Budget Ordinance C-3646, amending Ordinance Number C-36467, passed by the City Council November 27, 2023, and entitled, An Ordinance Adopting the Annual Budget of the City of Spokane for 2024, making appropriations to the various funds of the City of Spokane Government for the fiscal year ending December 31, 2024, and providing it shall take effect immediately upon passage, and declaring an emergency and appropriating funds in General Fund Number 1, add one exempt Deputy City Administrator position from 0 to 1 in the Mayor's Office. A, there is no change to the overall appropriation level in the general fund. This action arises from staffing changes in the mayor's office. There are three members of the public signed up to speak on this. Dennis Flynn, Dave M., and Megra Flatman. Hi, Dennis Flynn. I live near St. Charles. The mayor said she wants to balance the budget. I would propose one good way to start would be to not fill this position and to eliminate it from the appropriation level in the general fund. Thank you. Dave, go ahead and hit star three. Go ahead, you're unmuted. Thank you, good evening council, Dave M, Spokane. Um, Lisa Brown campaigned on the problems with the budget. She uh, supposedly was going to really crack down on the budget, and yet now she's requesting a deputy city administrator, excuse me, at an annual cost of $163,000 per year, plus benefits, I would assume. Also, the, now the council has approved a mayor chief of staff and there was no chief of staff for the previous mayor. I think that we need to uh, balance our budget, rein it in, and, this, and not uh, be adding more fluff to the mayor's office. Thank you, Council. Thanks, Dave. And now, Megra, go ahead. You're unmuted. Thank you. Uh, the deputy city manager assists in overseeing the day-to-day -day operations of the city and providing advice and assistance to the city manager, department heads, and senior managers, uh, according to the agenda. I don't believe I saw this listed anywhere in the agenda, but I read, probably from Range Media, that Mayor Brown plans on hiring former regional law and justice administrator Maggie Yates to this job. Yates has a history for advocating for better holistic solutions for Spokane's problems, including for, and I'm quoting her resignation letter, adequately investing in infrastructure that can better treat, house, and heal people. This constructive outlook paired with Yates's determination to better the lives of Spokaneites will greatly benefit Spokane. Thank you. Thank you. Council commentary, Councilman Bingo. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I think this position makes a lot of sense, especially um, given Mayor Brown's um, testimony to us today that they're going to be focused on um, public safety topics where we do have a significant amount of overtime in a lot of areas and 163 or $168,000 uh, does include benefits and that's not a small amount, but we um, we're well over $10 million in overtime last year in our public safety departments. And so if we're able to bring that down, 
uh, any considerable amount, then this would be a good investment for the city. Um, again, my my frustration with this was that previous uh, the previous administration had requested uh, very similar positions, and we shut that down. So I, that's my biggest frustration with this tonight. Isn't the position itself? I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, so I'll be supporting tonight um, this position, and I hope that it can actually put us in a better fiscal position. Councilmember Cathcart. Yeah, I would uh, concur with Councilmember Bingle um, largely, although I, one point I do disagree with him on is I actually think this position should be more holistic and focused across the city and not just on one area, one department or a couple departments under public safety. But um, uh, Mayor Woodward had tried a number of times to get a position like this. I believe I supported it once, opposed it once for financial reasons. Um, but it is an important job to have a deputy city administrator. The city administrator role is is huge. And it takes a lot of time, a lot of bandwidth, and having that support is really important. And so I do support this, um, but I do just encourage the mayor to, to consider uh, directing this position to be a bit more holistic rather than just singularly focused. And thank you both for that. So we are voting on the budget after the mayor's presentation today why she wants this position. The scope of the work is tremendous. And I have to say, prior administrations, there wasn't the human capital, that there were places the city should have been and we were not there at the table. And so when decisions were made, we did not have input. So I too am happy to support this going forward. Any other council commentary? Councilmember Bingle. I would just say one last thing to this, um, to this position, whoever ends up filling it, uh, when we're looking at public safety focus, that to keep in mind that um, uh, a, a, a real look and a real plan at establishing a new jail um, in the city of Spokane and for the county is a real priority. And uh, I hope that they take that project on and that they help us to develop a plan um, to uh, fund that moving forward. Right. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Prepare to vote. Prepare to vote again. <laughs> Mine's not lined up this time. There we go. Hold on one second. <laughs> Try again. It wasn't me, it was the power. <laughs> Resolution 2024-2, appointing council members to boards and commissions for 2024. Council President, two people signed up to testify, Terry Hill and Megra Flatman. And I may have jumped the gun if you want to do your amendments before testimony or after. Let's take testimony. I'm good either way. Yeah. Let's do testimony. Terry Hill, longtime Spokane resident. As a retired uh, STA paratransit worker and former union boss, I've attended my share of STA board meetings. I, um, I, I fully support the uh, uh, nominations uh, to this board tonight. I think the uh, two returning members are necessary, and I'm fully convinced that the uh, two freshmen are up for the job. Thank you all for your service to Spokane. I yield the podium. Megra, go ahead and hit star three. You're unmuted. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I also wanted to speak about the Spokane Transit Authority Board um, and all the infighting that there was. Um, one of the council members who we just heard uh, was already going appointed to this board and going to these things is council member Zapone. And one of his recent pushes was to get a cheaper bus pass for people who can't afford it. Um, there are 
a lot of homeless people who cannot make the trek out to the Trent Shelter Warehouse. It's incredibly far away. Even before there was ice and snow, it was not really feasible for people to make it all the way out there just in case there were spots because more often than not, they were turned away because it was full, and then they'd have to make the trek all the way back miles. And Councilmember Zapone pushed to get lower costs for people who can't afford it, and two of the people, including Commissioner Al French, colluded in order to shut him down. Some of the text messages were, quote, we will shut him down at the next board meeting. I will assemble the votes before then. These boards should be about getting stuff done. These boards should be about making Spokane better. They shouldn't be about infighting and sabotage and internal crap going on. This is a responsibility that we should not take lightly and Council Member Sapone and Council Member now current President Wilkerson did an amazing job in getting stuff done and bettering Spokenites' lives despite massive internal sabotage. And absolutely, I agree with the previous speaker that they should be reappointed because it's amazing their commitment in order to Again, getting stuff done instead of internal sabotage. Thank you. Thank you. Council commentary? Are we going to vote? Councilman Bingham? Uh, yeah, I have a number of issues with the uh, boards and commissions. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it to a couple of specific points. So um, we, we've heard a lot about STA. The city of Spokane has four positions on STA. We have three council districts. We have six council members up here. Of the three council districts, one is not represented, and that is District 1. Neither Michael Cathcart or I nor, um, are on STA. Uh, we requested to be on STA. Um, that was denied. Um, STA ridership is highest in my district. Um, we have the highest percentage of low-income folks who are using STA, and we believe that we deserve to be represented on that board. Uh, we heard a lot about infighting. I believe that the reason why we were not included on that board is because of that very infighting. And uh, there were actual quotes where, uh, you know, it was said about us that uh, we might not vote with the council majority or the way that the council majority might want. And that could be true. It might not be true. We don't know until the issues come up. But on the topic of representation, does District 1 deserve to be represented when there are four board seats? There are seven council members when we're fully staffed. There are six right now. The two that are left off are District 1. That makes absolutely no sense to me. I don't think there's any good argument for that to be the case. And uh, that's not to say that any of my colleagues wouldn't do a great job on there. They will. They will do a good job representing the city of Spokane in that area. However, Either Council Member Cathcart or myself would also do a great job because we are the elected representation of our district. Do we represent our district on that board? Yes. Do we represent the City of Spokane on that board? Yes. Both of those things can be true, and we deserve to have our voice heard. We have lobbied to be on that board, and we are not on it. That is offensive to my district. It's offensive to me personally, and uh, that's something that I hope that we can change soon. The other thing that, uh, to me, is a, is a huge problem uh, is the fact that while Council Members Zappone and I are uh, tied for being the third most senior uh, representatives on that board, uh, I'm not the chair of any committee. That to me seems to be a huge problem given the precedent set by this council for decades going back that seniority played a large role in uh, how those were determined. The fact that I'm not a chair is again offensive to me and to my district that we don't get to be represented the way that we want to represent ourselves. Um, there's a number of other issues on there that are much smaller, you know, uh, that uh, might just be the straw that broke the camel's back situation. But uh, overall, I think these, uh, this proposal, I think, is an affront to District 1, and I will not support it. So I will speak to that, uh, Councilmember Bingle. Thank you. 
I was just recently elected citywide, so I feel I do represent that district. And the voice in STA is regional. It is not just district specific. When we are making decisions, which our decisions are not district specific, it's for the greater good of the whole organization and the region, for our small cities as well. So that board does have representation on it. And again, we, there are things that have been going on that was already in play and some other reasons why those uh, people were picked to serve on STA. And it was not to be offensive or diminish. I do want to let you know that there is nothing in our council rules that says we have to go by seniority. It changes uh, every year or it has the option to change every year. So uh, I just want to make that statement that there is representation. Councilmember Katkar. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and make my amendments. I, I thought there was a council-wide amendment, but no uh, one's Council making Member it. Kasper. So I'll, I'm just going to go ahead and make mine. Um, so I first, I'm going to move. I'm not going to make a motion on all of mine. Um, I'm going to reduce it down to a couple. But first, I'm going to make a motion uh, to put uh, Amendment G on the table, uh, which would add Councilmember Bingle, um, or excuse me, uh, let's see, uh, F, which would add Councilmember Bingle to STA and would re remove Council President Wilkerson. My intention was not to remove Council President Wilkerson, but one member does have to be removed, and that seemed like the best uh, of the limited options there were. So I make that motion. Second. It's been moved and seconded to make... Council, Council President, I, I think what we really need first is a motion to amend to add the version circulated on January 18th. Did we do that this afternoon? I'm not sure that we did. No. No, we did not. So... so uh, the I don't better, think this is in the conflict. The better approach is to amend a motion. Well, I, I understand the better, and I was waiting for that to happen. Nothing happened, but I, I understand that. But it doesn't. It's not in conflict, so I don't think there's an issue here. We can we can take care of this amendment. I will wait for that amendment to pass, and then we will take care of the others. I will defer to council uh, to our policy director to go ahead and make the amendment. That's in the packet. As so are you it's ruling presented. my motion out of order? I am ruling it out of order and deferring to our policy director to go ahead. And if there's an amendment to accept what's in the packet, I need a motion for that. So moved. I need a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor of accepting the board and commissions that circulate in the packet indicate by saying aye. Aye. Or do you want to, aye. aye. Or do you want to vote? Uh, voice votes. Voice, voice votes fine. Okay. So, next, council. No. Was that, you, yeah, was, yeah, were there any no's? No. no. You gotta ask yeas and nays. Yeas. Any, all in favor is aye. 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 Any no's? No. Any, abs any no's? Any abstentions? So, four yeas, two no's. Was it five? Five To yes. one or? Five yeas. Yeah. Councilman McCathcar, you were an, no. an eye on that? Okay. Okay. Councilman McCathcar. Okay. So same motion, uh, putting uh, F back on the table, uh, adding Councilman Bingle to STA and removing Council President Wilkerson. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Indicate by saying aye? Aye. All those opposed, indicate by saying no? No. 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 Council Member Catcart. Okay, second motion. Um, uh, we will be combining E and I, adding Council Member Bingle as the Pies Chair, moving Council President Wilkerson to Vice Chair, adding Council President Wilkerson to Finance Chair, and moving Council Member Cathcart to Vice Chair. Second. And I will speak to this. I do not need to be a chair as much as my council uh, seatmate deserves to be a chair. Um, I would much rather support my council seatmate who should have this position uh, than I need at all to serve as a chair, in particular with the changes coming on our rules. So it was moved and second. All in favor of that indicate by saying aye. 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 No? No. 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 Okay. Uh, I will also move and this had to have been a mistake, although nobody's been willing to fix it, 
to put Councilmember Bingle back on the ledge committee and remove myself. Second. To move and second. All in favor of that, indicate by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Um, and my last, uh, the last motion I will make is uh, putting A on the table, adding uh, Council Member Cathcart to Council President Pro Tem and removing Council Member Zappone. And uh, well, I'll wait for a second. Second. All I will say to that is I think my track record speaks for itself, my seniority, my efforts to be collaborative and working across the board with this council, never missing a single vote um, on this council in four years. And I will leave it at that. I think my record speaks for itself. I'll speak to it. I just think that there is a, uh, an opportunity here, again, when we talk about collaboration, or, you know, are we actually about it or not? Um, there are obviously political divides you know, between people, and that's totally fine. You know? um, one thing that would be, a, again, a powerful testament to the city and to the region is, again, our willingness to work with one another um, in positions of power. Um, uh, despite ideological differences. This is one that, again, I believe uh, Council Member Cathcart should sit in that position. Um, and again, I think that it would be good for us, as we talked about, uh, or as we heard about in the, um, in the campaigns uh, all last year about how we were going to transcend politics. Um, I think that this is a great way to do it because, again, looking at the boards and commissions, it's hard to see how it's not driven by politics. Um, you know, I am in favor of uh, Councilmember Zappone for Pro Tem. Uh, I think, and I, I looked at the um, information that uh, Councilmember Cathcart presented around attendance and how often we, uh, you know, vote in alignment. And um, shockingly enough, most votes up here are uh, unanimous. And I've seen uh, Councilmember Zappone uh, be collaborative um, and work together on several policies and issues. And um, excited about this this new year yeah I'll speak to that um, I do commend Councilmember Cathcart on having perfect attendance uh, unfortunately it's not always possible to be at every meeting so uh, I think that is clear by life circumstances but I think that uh, pro tem position and being collaborative is more than just attending Monday night meetings there are lots of meetings that we have lots of working meetings that we have and being responsive to emails and conversations in the office and um, unfortunately, just this last week, there have been a couple meetings that you chose not to attend that were working meetings. And um, there have been lots of moments where we're trying to collaborate, and Councilmember Cathcart has not responded to those. So I think in an effort of collaboration, I think there's a lot Council of opportunity. Cathcart, and I'll speak. Yeah, I'll just say, I think uh, avoiding backroom decision-making, if that's your idea of collaboration or lack thereof, God help us. So there's no perfect assignment of boards and commissions. Every council member up here is qualified. When you use the term deserve, I don't know if I buy into someone deserves to be a chair. Um, it really is the alignment not only of this council, but I also had feedback from other committees who had requested certain council members to be uh, their liaison, looking at where they were already serving. I appreciate Council Member Catcart did serve as pro tem under Council Member Lori Kinnear, but that was council just- Council President Kinnear. Council President Kinnear, which was for several months during that transition period. I have nothing concerns around his job, but does that make him any more qualified than council members upon? So, what we have before us now uh, is this motion from Council Member uh, Catcart uh, to replace Council Member Zappone. It had been moved and second. All those in favor of that indicate by saying aye. Any aye. more? Aye. All those opposed, anybody say no? No. No, no abstentions. You can take the resolution. So. We're going to go with the resolution. Are we prepared? As amended. As amended. And are we prepared to vote? And we are prepared to vote. Display. 
Thank you. Next, Ms. Fister. Resolution 2024-3, adopting various amendments to the City Council's Rules of Procedure. There are numerous people signed up for this item. Uh, we will start with Jay McPherson, James Johnson, and Union Carter. Thank you, Madam President, Jay McPherson. Born and raised in Spokane. I noticed this was um, amended and so I'm happy to see that there's 20 open forum spaces a night now, a Monday night, as opposed to 40 a month. I applaud that. Thank you very much. There are some uh, trust issues that concern me still, though much of this is, is, is very improved. I noticed that a, somebody can sign up in person starting at 8 a.m. on Mondays, but if you want to sign up online, at, you have to wait till 5 p.m., if I'm understanding that correctly, then that would seem that those who would, or live near the area could fill all 20 spots before 5 p.m. And those of us um, that were looking to sign up online would be left out. That's a concern I have. Another concern that I have is having at the end of the night uh, seems to harm those of us that have families, those of us that have to work early in the morning and that it could go along and, and people be all prepared to share one of the 20 and not have an opportunity to address the council. Uh, that would be very disappointing. That actually happened uh, not too long ago when the council was overrun and I was prepared to share and had no opportunity. So I could see that happening uh, here again. Uh, the order of speakers will be determined at the discretion of the chair. That seems uh, like a concern also um, chosen at random. I, I'm concerned how that's gonna work. But I'm, I'm grateful for the improvements. Thank you very much. And I apologize. I had called James Johnson and Union Carter, who signed up for a different resolution. Uh, next up on this is Aslan Croft, Melanie Perry, and then Scott Ward. Good evening, City Council. Um, I just want to um, speak against uh, changing open forum um, procedure, especially with regards to standing. Um, each week, um, I have several multilingual members from my community who do not speak English as their first language. They only feel safe sharing their support through standing. Since I have been coming to City Council meetings, unfortunately, I have been doxxed for my activism in an attempt to incite harm to me and silence me. I have to listen to the disgusting, transphobic, snide remarks from fully grown men on the way in and out of these chambers, hear their loud, disparaging comments when my comrades speak in open forum, have had cameras shoved in my face by these same fully grown, strange men and their friends, been called a terrorist and my religion mocked, and other tactics like this. As a hijabi woman, coming to city council to speak is often something I dread because of this. I completely understand why many people feel unsafe coming to city council and worried for their safety and putting their full name on a recorded video for bad actors to use against them. Therefore, standing may be the only safe way our community members have to participate in our uh, community's decision making. Uh, please just keep this in mind as you vote on this resolution and the amendments. Thank you. Thank you. Melanie Perry? Hello. Hi, uh, my name is Melanie Perry. I'm a Spokane resident. I've lived here my whole life. Uh, I've been coming to city council meetings and speaking quite a bit in the last few years. I just wanted to say that public speaking is not something that comes naturally to me, but I also feel a need to kind of push forward and speak out on important topics when they affect my community. <laughs> and I would never have felt comfortable with this if it weren't for my friends in like Mac Movement and SCAR and other orgs that are out here every week. And I just wanted to urge you to think of keeping a public forum as open and accessible as possible because the issue of standing to show our support should be thought of as an accessibility issue as much as one of free speech and public expression. Some people need this option as their only way to voice their opinion to the council. And 
not even just for reasons of anxiety or ability to speak, but uh, if the space is limited to like 15 or 20 people, this may be the only way for people to, uh, to show any support. Standing to support others in their testimony could be the only way that they or I can voice our opinions to the chambers. Um, that's why I oppose m many of the rule changes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Scott Ward, then Justice for All. Yeah, I'd like to oppose most of the changes that are proposed here, except for I, I will support um, the expansion to 20 people for open forum that uh, I believe the, the Dillon Amendment. Um, th the more people have an ability to engage with local government, the better. Um, and I think it, it, it seems a little interesting to me that there seems to be these changes are almost a pushback to the unprecedented mobilization of, of community members in the last three months uh, who have come down here um, in large numbers and participated in this democratic process in ways that we really haven't seen. And that should be seen as a good thing, right? Like, I think, it, you know, I assume you all got involved in this too because um, you believed in that thing. Um, and so instead of trying to push back and try to change rules to make it so people don't want to come down here, we should be making it more accessible. So I appreciate the expansion to 20 people. Um, I would also encourage expanding from two to three minutes if possible. Um, also, uh, you know, standing is, is an important thing that people can do uh, in order to express themselves in a way they feel comfortable and safe. Um, I mean, I think it's, it's meaningful to you that you see the way other people feel besides just the ones that get up at the podium. Um, also, I, I understand the, the worries about accessibility when people are, are standing and blocking vision. So perhaps you could block off segments of, of the chamber for uh, less able-bodied folks so that they could see better. Uh, so I, I, I think those are good, good things to think about. But um, people power is important. That's what you've seen. And so instead of silencing or, or kind of trying to repress working class people who spend their time on Monday nights to sit down here for hours. I mean, that's, that's a big commitment. That's showing people are engaging in democracy. So uh, y'all should support that and expand it. Um, I think also in, important thing is do not restrict uh, presentations or infographics. Um, and also keeping conversation, the, the topics we can discuss as, as open as possible. Because the things that do happen around the world do impact here. Just as I, I read earlier, the bombs that explode abroad explode here. And so it's all connected. Yeah, militarism, racism, the struggles that all of us here are, are going through with, with, with capitalism as working class people, they're all inter interrelated. So we should be able to talk about those issues unrestrictedly. Um, so uh, I encourage you to not uh, turn to repression when things get uncomfortable. Okay? Uh, yeah, I mean, look how many people we have been bringing here. I think it's a, it's a beautiful thing that people are wanting to engage and be a part of the process. Uh, so I, I encourage you to embrace that and expand that as much as possible. Let's keep it at uh, the beginning of, of open, or the beginning of the meeting as well for thank open you, forum, not at the end. Thank you. Thank you. Justice, thank you. I do want to say, um, just like there was a history before October 7th of last year, there's a history with us coming and speaking at council. There's a history of us being ignored, and there's also a history of, of several council members asking me to bring people down here. And we have done that for the past year and a half. And since, we have actually had more responses from council members about what we bring to the table, what we talk about, which is, which is a healthy way to get, engage with government. Um, limiting people, limiting what they can say, what they can bring up is not great. And some of these other changes are, are definitely very specific um, that I think should be noted. Like not having filming proceedings other than from designated areas. Um, that, this is a public space. I was assaulted in these chambers and I sent all that to several council members and uh, no, nothing happened from there. I asked for if there was any video or anything from in here and I didn't get that. So if I didn't take my own video, if I wasn't able to record what was going on, you know, other people wouldn't also be able to say that same person had also 
harassed them or assaulted them. Sorry. I don't know how we, we think this is a good idea. Because last year, city council lost a civil rights, uh, First Amendment rights um, thing where we, we were able to come and we were able to tell city council that they were breaking or they ha were enforcing a rule that was just beyond bizarre. You cannot say council member X said this on this date. And what happened after that? Particularly, what was said about me as well? Because this, I get a lot of questions from the news about what I think about all of this. What do I think about these changes? What do I think about what goes on? I have another job. So for me to be like, what do I need council members to do is very bizarre to me because sometimes I need you all to figure out what you should be doing. And you should realize when you do something like you lost a whole fight about a First Amendment thing and then your reaction is to then do all of this, it doesn't look good for you. We have power because we use our voice. It is very limited power because it's not as accessible as, you know, people we've mentioned in the past, like Chad Wendell, you know, business, commercial business property owners. And so this podium has been used as a place of dismissal, used to act like, you know, people up here are, are wild or, or crazy, right? And this may be because of popular culture like parks and recreation. But people here are not wild or crazy. They are people who care about the, what's going on in Spokane. They're passionate. Everybody here who comes up has something to say, and, and I'm proud of everyone. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. We have Dave M. and then Ashley Kaufman. Go ahead, Dave, you're unmuted. Good evening, Council. Resolution 2024, <clears throat> 003. This is Dave M. from Spokane. Moving the, to the open forum to the end of the public engagement seems to be another way to try and silence our voice. At the end, at the end of open forum where you're going, or at the beginning of open forum prior to it, you're going to take a break. You're going to allow city staff to go home and then allow open forum which is going to end at 10 p.m. So it sounds to me like it's another attempt to nix open forum. Picking from the sign-up list at random and in a random order leads much suspicion to what is going on as far as open forum. We would like the list to be published and posted at all meetings prior to the open forum so that we can see who signed up and who is picked to speak. For those of you who campaigned and you new members, this treatment of citizens being put to the back of the line is not a good look. We put you in these seats to represent us, not silence us. On January 10th, the Spokesman Review had an article that went into this in great depth. They also referenced me and my silencing by the council last year. I, I would ask everyone to take a look at that. And I do want to commend the council in closing on eliminating the theatrics that have gone on for a year or more now and uh, showing some respect for every speaker who speaks at open forum. Thank you, council. Thank you, Ashley. And then Liz Moore. Go ahead, Ashley. You're unmuted. Uh, hello. Okay. Hello, City Council. My name is Ashley Calderon, and I live in Spokane Valley. It is shameful to think that the City Council might vote in favor tonight of the open forum will change. For a while now, I have been coming to City Council meetings Monday night after Monday night. Meetings where I have seen ever-increasing interest and in activity with open forum. There are a lot of issues on the minds of the people of Spokane. 
issues I've been listening to, even tonight, where it is clear that your most vulnerable citizens' support systems are underfunded and understaffed. Yet it seems that the only thing you take from those testimonies is how long it takes to count to two minutes. Instead of attempting to hear and meet our concerns as citizens, you create rules to restrict the voices and expressions of the people you are accountable to. Accountable to. Make no mistake about that. Remove the restrictions on topics and open forum. We have a right to speak truth to our concerns, not to be shut down. Allow us to use the full extent of visual media. Let us use the best tools at our disposal to inform you. It is goofy that this council sees active participation in this process as a threat. You think it would be a boon to this chamber having so many people actively getting involved in these meetings. You think you would be excited and interested in the thoughts and concerns we share here on Mondays. Instead, you enact silencing tactics, meeting after meeting, meant to continually dwindle down the self-expression and speech of the people of Spokane. Speaking of limiting the ability to participate, standing. There is no disruption in standing, no slowing of procedures, of meetings, no material way standing has any impact on these procedures beyond letting the council know the feelings of your citizens, yet you are taking the time to try to ban it? People in this community want to be heard. We are watching. We are listening. This is your chance to prove that you want to listen. That's it. Thank you. Liz Moore. Good evening, Council President, Council mm -hmm. Members. Um, I am uh, Liz Moore. I speak on behalf of the Peace and Justice Action League of Spokane. Oh. Thank you slash how embarrassing. OK, that's how tall I am. Uh, so I'm speaking on behalf of the Peace and Justice Action League of Spokane. I was thinking back to the origins of my experience with um, standing. We, um, we are opposing the um, attempt to restrict the ability to stand. We see it as a point of political expression and bodily autonomy. Um, and we also oppose moving open forum to the end. My first experience with um, standing in these um, in the, from the chairs in this chamber was in 2015 or 2017 when there was an, uh, when hundreds of people came to this chamber in opposition to the anti-immigrant profiling initiative that was on the ballot at that time or heading to the ballot. The first person to testify happened to be my colleague who was reading testimony from a member of our community who didn't feel safe to share their own story directly because they were undocumented. And we all stood up in unison in support of that person and in uh, unity against that anti-immigrant profiling initiative, which was later tossed out due to a broadly based coalition legal challenge. During that evening of testimony, some supporters of that initiative, including a city council member at that time, spoke some really repugnant racist tropes against immigrants. And people in the chambers organically and responsibly stood and turned their backs, refusing literally to countenance that racism. So we strongly urge you to reject those changes. Um, we echo the recognition that other people have spoken to of the equity value of having many avenues of engagement with local government. We encourage you not to waste time with um, those changes and just reject them and keep it as it is. Thank you. Adir Bloom and then Larry Andrews. With the exception of increasing the number of speakers at each city council meeting from 15 to 20, I oppose all of the proposed changes to the city council's open forum. With no offense intended, these rules seem to be to your sole benefit, city council members, and that strikes me as a preposterous move for people elected into a public office. Moving the open forum to the end of the meeting means that you can just mentally check out rather than pay attention to the concerns of your community. It also means that the working people of Spokane will have to stay out later when they could instead spend that same time at home resting for the next workday. Further broadening the already draconian decorum rules to disallow standing and support or protest only helps you city council members to feel less uncomfortable and awkward when viewing dissent in your citizenry. It does nothing to further freedom of speech and personal expression. Part of your job as our city council members is to listen to your constituents and to truly take their concerns to heart. Your job isn't to sit above us in comfort, content to ignore the voices of the people who elected you. You chose these positions of power, and to quote Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. 
City Council, it is your responsibility to represent your constituents, and how are you meant to do so without creating an open and accessible space for them to speak to you? Don't, don't choose the easy way out, and don't further restrict this essential outlet for your community. If anything, you should be making more efforts to hear from your community members. Isn't that what you were elected for? Thank you. Point of order. Yeah. Council President. Snapping. Yes, snapping. Thank you. Larry, come on down. Thank you. My name's Larry Anser, Andrews, and Council Member. Thank Rogers, you. And thank you for taking the time to listen to me here tonight. As a business person, I have a really hard time getting down here at 8 o'clock in the morning to sign up. I mean, you'd just void out everything that I'd ever come down here for because I have to get my men out every day. I mean, that's business, you know. Um, to have me and everybody else here wait till late in the evening to talk is a very expensive prop proposition here. Uh, my day starts at it's about 6 o'clock in the morning <laughs> and to get ready for my men. And I think that's a bad deal, okay? I, I think it's a raw deal, actually. Uh, I do applaud you to give us 20 people instead of the 15. Uh, I think those type of things we need to grow upon to get more input even though it's input some of us might not agree with, everybody has a right to speak. And that's what builds our country the way it is. Diversity. Diversity to listen to everybody's opinion and then to make decisions based upon those opinions. And I, I can't emphasize that enough. I mean... Many of us over time have fought for this representation. And even though it's hard for you guys to sit there and listen to it time after time after time, um, it is the American way, <laughs> okay? And I don't agree with a lot of what goes on, but I'm here to listen and maybe to learn some of what they have. Too, okay? And hopefully what I say, they will learn a little bit. And we come to a middle agreement. Agreement that I've seen tonight at this council split right down party lines already. And I was hoping that Lisa Brown would, would bring people together. And, and it hasn't happened. It's already started. And I'm, I'm afraid of that. Uh, thanks for your time. And I appreciate all the time every one of you put in. Because it's, a, it's a, real, a real thing to put that kind of time in. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Lillian McGaw and then Mackenzie Draper. Lillian, if you're online, I... Go ahead, you're unmuted. All right, thank you. So the limitation of open forms proposed by resolution 2024-3 is an obvious attack on the voices of people the council says they listen to. Time and time again, the council expresses that they are forming their opinions and policies based on what they hear from the citizens of Spokane. However, a lot of those opinions and policies are in direct opposition to what has been expressed by the majority of speakers at the open forum over the past several months here at these city council meetings. There's no more obvious showing of this situation through this resolution, which is asking the people you represent to, in the simplest terms, be quiet, stay quiet. I ask, why would you want us to be quiet if you want to listen to us? I ask another question. Do you think we would be this loud or disruptive if you were actually listening to us in the first place? Please keep an open forum at the beginning of the meeting and always to occur at every city council meeting. Please allow open forums to remain less restricted on topics of discussion. Please increase the count from 15 to 20. Please do not restrict visual media during an open forum. And please do not restrict the right to perform actions like standing. These important tools are useful for those who have anxiety around public speaking, as well as to show support to those who are speaking. Thank you. Thank you. 
McKenzie, and then Tracy Bloom. McKenzie, can you hit star three? I don't see McKenzie right now. Tracy Bloom. August. Hello, uh, my name is August Patton, and I'm here to oppose most of the changes uh, in Resolution 03. Uh, the only one that I do approve of is adding the five extra people at two minutes um, each time. City Council, it seems apparent that you are rather annoyed with us, uh, since you have very little desire to actually listen to us. That is the only thing that these changes indicate to me does not indicate that you care, that you listen, that you want to hear from us. Because why would you restrict the amount of people who are able to participate in your democracy unless you didn't want to hear from us? It's ridiculous. It's absurd. I don't understand how it was put on the floor in the first place. We are clearly not going to be quiet. And if you don't want to continue to be annoyed with us, as I continue to be annoyed often with you, then I would highly recommend do not go through with as preposterous changes to the city council meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Tabita and then Zach McGuckin. Tavita? Well, city council members and city council president Wilkerson, um, I just wanted to say that this, this resolution is very disappointing to me and many of us here at city council. Um, while we are adding five new, five other people to speak. It still does not let you, as members and representatives of us, to listen to us very clearly. It also takes away our voice for, for having you listen. Um, this is my second time speaking here, and I don't want my voice to be taken away by this resolution and I have had to say that this resolution is horrible for our community me and people here it is disappointing to hear this and see this on our forum and many people speaking against this um, thank you Zach? Hello. Um, okay. Gosh, sorry, one second. <laughs> Hello, my name is Zachary McGuckin, and I'm a member of the Party for Socialism and Liberation. Um, and I said this last week, but I'll say it again. If this system was working the way we are told it does, our engagement here at City Council would be seen as a success. It would not be seen as something that needs to be restricted or stopped or punished. Um, both uh, Zapone and Wilkerson, you've stated that uh, part of the reason you proposed uh, this ordinance was to uh, maintain order and procedure in these meetings. Um, I'm in favor of order and procedure, but we have to ask, what is that order and procedure for? Is that order and procedure to uh, represent the people of Spokane effectively? Is it to uh, hear from the citizenry? Is it to uh, make changes in our community that impact it positively? Or is it to protect injustice, protect oppression, protect um, wrongdoing? This order and procedure is to protect wrongdoing, not to create positive changes. 
And I want to uh, voice support for the expansion of Open Forum. Uh, five more speakers is great. The rest of these uh, new restrictions, as many people, and I'm uh, predicting it will be near unanimous uh, in this feedback, uh, have stated is not supported by the people of Spokane. It's not in favor of the people of Spokane. And the only thing that it is benefiting is you all and those uh, rich, uh, privileged people who have easier access to uh, council's decision-making uh, powers. Those like uh, that we cited earlier um, in terms of with connections to council members directly. And so, uh, yes, I want to voice uh, disagreement with all the proposed changes except for the expansion of five more people. Thank you. Thank you. Andrea G. and then Tim O'Rourke. Andrea G. She's Andrea. Yeah. Andrea G. Um, my name is Andrea Rose Gallardo. I am the daughter of Trinidad Gallardo and Regina Sherwood, descendant of the Spokane and Coeur d'Alene tribe. Uh, my Native American lineage comes from the Sherwood and Seltese family. When you guys are making up these rules and changes, I hope you ask yourself, is this change going to benefit the people that I'm here to serve? Um, as a Spokane tribal member, you know, I always like to say, like, is this our way when I make decisions? Um, we are known for our kindness. It's documented in history that we've always been welcoming. And so I hope that you guys take that in consideration. Um, um, I also ask you to ask yourself, is this going to help make things more difficult? What is the purpose of this rule? Does any of these decisions value life? Are you putting people over profit? If anything, we should be getting more time to speak and less rules. I believe as de demonstrated tonight, um, there'd probably be less confusion. A lot of people signed up for something that they didn't mean to sign up for because with all these new rules, it's getting very confusing for us everyday people um, to be heard. and. We're just trying to express our concerns and uh, to give you guys ideas so that we can all share this land and for all walks of life because we're all here together. Um, as an indigenous person, um, we've always been taught to give our full introductions and I just feel like the little bit of time that we get isn't even enough for my introduction. Um, um, so many things that I'm not supporting. Um, it doesn't help the average working class to get here if you make these changes, um, and especially trying to just have it at the end of open forum. I think you should have one in the beginning and end. Um, no, once a month, no way. Um, you guys get paid to be here, we don't. Um, I'll always stand against re repression. Uh, Mac always has your guys' back. We're here for the people. I hope you guys are too. Um, we've been here through many different city council members and um, once we were um, applauded on bringing diversion here and the different people and having um, you know, the people being heard. Um, and the thing about standing, we've always been able to stand. Um, it's kind of helped you guys to see, see who's supporting that might not have been able to come here, up here and speak. I do public speaking a lot and it's still hard for me to speak, get up here and speak. Um, that's why Mac Movement offers also um, a side of free speech, doing chalk art because it's another thank, form. Thank you, Andrew. Of our rights. Thank, thank you. you. Jim O'Rourke and then Justin Haller. Hi, I'm Tim. I'm a resident of Spokane here in District 1. And um, 
I would like to uh, echo some much better speakers than myself in saying that I oppose this uh, change to the open forum rules. I uh, had a whole thing written, but I got, honestly just got a little bit frustrated after the embarrassing cat fight that we all just witnessed on the last docket item. Um, look, I get it. This is your job. You have to be here. You don't always want to be here. You don't always want to listen to us. The longer we're here, the longer you have to stay. I get that. But it is a job. When I have a lot of customers at work, I don't get to go home if I want to. I don't get to decide that they have to come later or whenever it's convenient for me. I just have to deal with it or I can quit. So I, I guess I would suggest to the council that if they feel that they don't have the time to listen to us, the people that they are meant to represent, the reason that they are here, then they are free to do what the rest of us do in that situation and quit your job. Thank you. Justin? My name's Justin Haller. I live in District 1, and um, there are a lot of problems in District 1. There are a lot of problems in Spokane in general, and I am fed up with the Me Too, I support the current thing, pumpkin spice latte crowd taking up city council meetings about stuff that has nothing to do with city council. I don't give a flying fig about what's going on outside of city council, outside of the city, during city council meetings. It should be about city council. I'm even offended that people show up from the valley. The valley has nothing to do with our district. You know, it has nothing to do with city council. You know, if, if you came from Colbert or Deer Park or you know, elk or whatever, they'd be like, whoa, 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 that's, that's, that's a different county. Yet, week after week, there are all these people that either don't live here or they're talking about stuff that city council can't possibly solve, even with a budget. You know, and then you have people on, 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 on city council that aren't, allowed to be on other committees when they should be, which is a whole other thing, but that, that's another, another offense. Um, but, you know, seniority should be important. I, I think that's a huge thing. And I, I want to know where our money goes. And when I get shut down, talking about the $200 million that goes to STA for shutting down uh, one lane of division, and, they, and, and two city council members go, oh, it's a foregone conclusion. I'm like, no, no, no let, let's talk about this. Because $200 million for uh, shutting down one lane for city council, for, uh, for division, is lame. Drive, drive on Friday at 4 o'clock and, and see, see if that w would make sense. And if you can't talk about that during open forum or other times and talk about what you want to talk about, that's pretty egregious. And furthermore, if you can't clap or boo and out people, as as the trying to keep it clean, as the poopo heads or or people that you disagree with, then then where where wh why is it we can we can cheer and 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 clap for the poetry or all the other things during city council meetings, but we can't do it for other things. So it's it's triggering and it creates uh, it, it hurts people's feelings and they and they have to go to their cry closets or their safe space when clapping is not okay. But then when it's okay, they don't have to go to their safe spaces or cry closets. That doesn't make sense. How about equal rules for equal things? And if we can clap and and cheer for one thing, we should be able to chap, clap and cheer for all things or boo and let the public know exactly where we stand, because not all things are agreed with. Thank you, Justin. Megra, who's online? Go ahead, Megra, you're unmuted. Thank you. Censoring visual aid and presentations by not allowing them to be publicly shared is senseless. There is absolutely zero reason for it. I shared a video last year where then city council president openly made fun of a citizen who was not even present. Telling us to share these videos instead to city council email is useless. 
It's city council who is being disrespectful. We need to be able to share this information publicly. How else are we supposed to hold our elected officials accountable? I said there was no reason for censoring this media, but maybe that is the reason to avoid accountability. By the way, that was not the only time this individual has been disrespected by council. Councilmember Cathcart has openly mocked them as well, and they still have not received a public apology. That's incredibly shameful and disrespectful. Not allowing silent, respectful standing is also needless censorship. We have so little ability to show assent or dissent that this silent, respectful action is one of the only avenues we the people have. Colin Kaepernick famously similarly needed a silent, respectful form of protest. And after speaking with a former Green Beret and NFL player, he went from sitting to kneeling during the national anthem. There's no good reason to move this. Moving open form to the end instead of the beginning, it also incredibly decreases accessibility. I support Council Member Dillon's amendment, which would keep open forum at the beginning. Council members need to be present the entire time, no matter what, and moving open form to the end, especially putting it after a recess, also only decreases input. There is zero reason to make people who have families stay until 10 p.m. Increasing the sign-up time is good, but randomizing the order of speakers needs to be audited or something in order to ensure that there's no nefarious selection. Increasing the speakers from 15 to 20 is good as well, unless we can never get to the full 20 if open form is moved to the end and we hit 10 p.m. and there's no motion to continue. Thank you. Thank you. David Brookbank and then Rob McNerney. David, if you're online, can you hit star three? Oh, I see you, hold on. Go ahead, David, you're unmuted. Okay, to give me just a second to get my notes in front of me here. Okay. Just having a trouble with my phone here. Well, I'm David Brookbank from uh, Party for Socialism and Liberation, and I'm a citizen of Spokane. However, I'm calling from Nicaragua at this moment. Um, regarding citizen participation in open forum, I oppose all proposed changes except adding five additional speakers. Uh, I agree with that. The council has targeted open forum rules in the past, always when the council has decided it needed to define community input as out of bounds of council interests or of elite interests or as a threat to capitalism and or imperialism. The Spokane City Council discredits its claim to be a democratic body by periodically making restrictive or punitive rule changes to open forum, a forum the council already calls limited open forum. Tonight's proposed changes to open forum are not the first time the council has responded restrictively when citizens of Spokane take up issues that frontally challenge political or corporate power or as is now occurring with the inevitable fallout from the council's one-sided October 9th pro-Israel resolution. In the face of powerful rejection by the Spokane public of that October 9th resolution and the process used to pass it unanimously without council comment and without calling on two members of the public waiting to speak, the council's choosing to attempt to change the rules to further limit, silence, marginalize, stigmatize, and punish the public for challenging the U.S. two-party ruling class system of brutal capitalist imperialism. And it's doing this rather than first subjecting its own severely flawed process and mistakes on October 9th to an internal process of ruthless criticism and reporting back to the public on how that occurred and the changes that council itself will make to its own process. One of the rawest, purest forms of democratic participation occurs at the local level at city council meetings where the people speak for themselves. It's abundantly clear with so few of our city's severe problems being adequately addressed by our local government in conjunction with local corporations that our system has failed. That failure cannot sufficiently be brought before the council and public at weekly council meetings with council members periodically seeking to relegate public open forum participation to late in the night at the end of meetings or making it once a month or other changes such as not being able to use the technology that we all use every day to share information. That effectively takes an extremely short amount of time and the um, knowledge that people have and, and restricts it further. In closing, it's unacceptable that no council member commented on the content of Magra Platman's detailed testimony of where taxpayer money is going. And it's equally unacceptable that council members, especially those who claim liberal or progressive credentials, so often maintain complete silence in the face of people confronting the failures of our system to meet human needs, just as it was unacceptable on October 9th that no member even asked a question about the pro-Israel resolution. 
That is one of the reasons public forums should be expanded. In no case should it be restricted, further limited, or moved to the dark of the night. As is said in Latin America, solo el pueblo salve el pueblo, only the people save the people. Thank you. Open forum is one of the ways that's done. Thank you. Thank you. Sam Lee and then Mickey Hatfield. There's nothing that I could say that hasn't already been said. I don't care about being articulate tonight. I'm angry and I'm tired. And I shouldn't have to be standing here telling you that I oppose these open forum rule changes. I don't get paid to stand here and talk to you. You all are getting paid to listen to us. Please act like it. There is an immense amount of disrespect every time somebody gets up here and you all disagree with what is being said. I am here to call it imperialism, white supremacy, colonialism, ableism, classism. You all should care about these issues. Why are you here if you don't? Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, Rom, come up. My, my mistake. And then we will go to Mickey Hatfield. When citizens come here to speak, we come to share our thoughts and we come to share them with the city council, but even more so, and I think even more importantly, we come to speak to our fellow citizens, to share our thoughts with one another. This can't be done online, we really can't have a, a proper dialogue, it needs to be in a forum like this. At its core, this sharing of ideas in the marketplace of a body like this is at the fundamental root of democracy. So I ask, why is the council seeking to restrict the democratic process, to restrict the access to, that the people have to this council? The council should encourage and support the people that are here, the people that come and who come every week, who come when they want to come to address whatever topic is on their heart. So I encourage the exercise of, of constitutional rights before this body. And even though I rarely stand in support of anything that's said in this chamber, I fully support anyone who chooses to do so. It's part of their expression, part of their expression of their beliefs, and so please uh, do not restrict people's right, people's ability to stand in support of one another. Thank you. Thank you. Mickey, thank you. I, too, am very tired of having to come out here for silly things such as the changes to the open forum rules. Just to keep it brief, we demand all of us here to keep an open forum at the beginning of the meeting or at a set time to occur at every council meeting. If I didn't come up here to speak about this at the very beginning, you wouldn't have had a chance to tell me that I could sign up for this slot right now and talk to you. I would have come all the way out here to barely be able to show what little support I can by doing the thing that people are doing right now. And I would have been silenced that much further if the open forum was at the end. Please also allow open forums to remain less restricted on topics of discussion as there are so many things that need to be heard outside of what little bubble you find yourselves in at any given point in time. Continue to increase the count from 15 to 20 people at two minutes each. Three minutes, maybe, would be even better. Do not restrict visual media, such as presentations and infographics during open forum, because people like me who struggle with language and reading in general need visual media 
to better understand certain topics. And I'm sure it would make it a lot easier for certain points to come through to you on certain things if it was in a visual format and not just spoken at you. Do not restrict the right to stand, which is an important tool of democracy for those who hold anxiety around public speaking. As you have seen tonight, so many people have stood in support of many of these words, and it is all they have to be able to support. <clears throat> Excuse me, to be able to support such things. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Andrew Cowley? <clears throat> There, uh, <clears throat> Hi, my name is Andrew Cowley. I'm a member of the Party for Socialism and Liberation uh, from Spokane. And there isn't that much that I have to say uh, that hasn't already been said. Um, but I want to speak against uh, the proposed changes uh, to the rules of open forum. Uh, the city of Spokane uh, should welcome the kind of engagement uh, in the democratic process of people gum coming down here even just to speak about something uh, for two minutes. Uh, and I think that people should also have the right to stand if they're like me and they often get nervous and then articulate about this kind of thing. Um, and I'm asking that that be done at the beginning of each city council meeting so that people do not have to wait till the end and that it be done at every meeting because our voice is a necessary part of the governance of our city. And if you take our voice out of meetings, say that we get to speak once a month, then you're sort of claiming that your voices are more important than ours, aren't you? And uh, so that's uh, all I'll say, except that um, Martin Luther King said that silence is betrayal, and uh, we will not be silent. We will not betray our neighbors or the people of Palestine. Thank you. Thank you. Council, uh, could I request a motion to amend the previously filed version of Resolution 2024-23 uh, that's in the, included in your agenda packet under the Resolution 2024-003? So moved. Second. The, what is this, an amended version this of this? This is the version that's in the packet. That's the version that's in the packet, Council McCacken. All right. Uh, pretty much our standing, we saw the... The changes. base one that's been circulated most yes. recently. Not any additional amendments. Okay. Nothing new. Uh, so it's been moved and seconded. I'm so uh, sorry, who seconded it? Oh, thank you. All in favor of um, amending the version that's in the packet indicate by saying aye. 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 Any no's? No. Any abstentions? Great. We'll move on to Kitty's version. Sure. Okay, we're going to go to the next motion uh, to consider uh, the amended file by Councilmember Klitsky as listed in amendments A and B in the packet. Does Ms. Fisher need to read that? She doesn't need to read it. Okay. So, um, thank you. I am new, and um, I don't know what I did wrong, but I can't bring our motions up in front of me because I lost my internet connection. And so I apologize for that. So I don't know which one is A and which one is B. I'm sorry about that. A is the open forum proposal. Um, and I am pulling it up right now too. Is, is it the randomizer? <clears throat> it, yes, it is um, randomizing open forum testimony slots and opening sign up for open forum um, to begin at 5 p.m. on the Friday before the legislative session. So these, these changes would allow folks to sign up beginning as soon as the agenda is published at 5 p.m. on the Friday before you would have all weekend to sign up. I have heard feedback from folks in the community that it's hard to get here at 5 p.m. and try to be the one who gets the first 20 slots. So um, the only way that I could think of to make that fair is the way that we did in staff meetings at my old job. 
None of us wanted to be the first person to do our staff report, so we put everybody's name in a randomizer, and it spun around, and it shows who had to go next and do their staff report. And so I'm trying to take that knowledge forward with this um, idea. Um, nobody liked my spinning wheel app idea. Um, I thought it was festive. So we are going to do it in an Excel spreadsheet. And we're hoping that City Cable 5 can just do a cutaway of the list and pushing randomize and seeing who's in the top 20. So that would be the change that I'm proposing. I think you just need a motion. So I'll, I'll make the motion if we can. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. Council Member Binkle, then Council Member Catcart. Yeah, I'll speak on the on the randomization. I think there's some merit to the idea, just as there's merit to um, not doing it. But as somebody mentioned earlier today, um, uh, making sure that we audit the randomization, I think, is also really important if that's what we decide um, to do. Um, and then also, as, as much as possible, having that be transparent, having it displayed as it randomizes. Um, because again, the intent here is to uh, uh, hear uh, many voices, and uh, uh, with with any semblance of um, lack of transparency, then again, accusations could be uh, could be lobbied that you know we're trying to silence certain voices over others, which is certainly not the intent of anybody on this council. And so, um, the randomization, I think, there's uh, some merit to that idea, but it would need to be uh, very closely watched and uh, audited, as was uh, mentioned earlier. I did forget to mention that one of the advantages of this is we would be able to announce the people that will be able to testify and then if it is later in the agenda people could either call in or come in at that time. Councilmember Catcart. Yeah, just clarification, are we voting on 2.2 A and B or just 2.2 A? My um, interpretation was just A since okay. they're taken separately. So council commentary. Yeah, I guess I'm just not, I'm I'm not sure where I fall on this because again I think there's pros and cons to both, so I don't know where my other council members are at on that. Yeah, I'm supportive of the randomization. I think that it'll be a positive difference and um, instead of the racing down and people getting frustrated because they can't be here exactly at that start time. So I think that gives more opportunity to more people. All right. uh, commentary. I support the sign up as soon as the agenda is posted on Friday at five o'clock uh, online to give people as much time to go forward. Council President. Yes. And to something that you've said before, you know, this is again our uh, attempt to hear from uh, as many people as possible. And uh, as you've said earlier, if something doesn't work, we can always change it again and make sure that it's because again. We've heard a lot tonight that we don't want to hear from folks, and I just can tell you that that's just not the actual truth. We definitely want to hear from people. And so this idea, if we find out that it's not accomplishing the goal for which it's been set forth, we can always change it. So, Or if we don't have a good, the right technology to make it happen. Right. So right. Uh, that's something as well. So we need to go back. I think we've got to vote on that motion, right? We've got to vote on the motion. All in favor of the motion, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any no's? Okay, the motion passed. It's added. So now. Councilmember Klitsky's second amendment, proposed amendment, is to Rule 2.16 um, public testimony on legislative items, not just open forum. Um, and her proposal, which I'm sharing on the screen now is um, for members of the public to be able to sign up to give testimony on legislative items beginning on, at 5 p.m. on that Friday before. Sorry, you, you skipped to 216. I, we haven't done 22B yet. I, I, I'm sorry, that is, um, Amendment B is an amendment to this rule. Well, I think I commented on both, so I'm sorry I'm, about that. I'm very confused right now. So we voted on this piece. Now we have to vote on this piece and then this piece, correct? Um, you voted for the the A was the open forum changes? Correct. And I, I asked for clarification if it was 2.2 A or 2.2 A and B. And I you said sorry, it was I'm just A. Okay. I, it, I that would change my vote. Okay. We, can we reconsider? We can reconsider. I, I thought we were taking just 2.2 A. Just a. I think right. But I gave, I, there was a misinterpretation of no. what A was, which is open forum, paragraph A and B. 
Ms. Fister, was yeah. that the motion? Was it 2.2A? Uh, it was 2.2A. Okay, so okay. we did not okay. vote on 2.2B. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right, so now you're speaking to B. Which was, I'm sorry, I got confused as B, well. B is the signing up. Oh, okay. So, um, yes, so this would allow folks to sign up as soon as the agenda is published on Friday all the way through the weekend and to the next day on Monday for open forum. And that's where we would get this list that we would randomize. So I imagine it would be a larger list than we normally get, which is why I think randomization would be helpful. Councilman McCatcar. Yeah, so my, my concern with B is I don't agree that we should have uh, online sign up beginning earlier than in person sign up. They should both start concurrently. I believe they both should start Friday, or I would even start it earlier for open forum in the week. But regardless, I think they should both happen simultaneously. Um, second, I do have concerns with this idea of going back to the naming issue. Um, I, we've, we've been through this before. I have no interest in returning to that, that debate. So The which issue? requiring people to use their name. Oh, uh, that wasn't part of my amendment. It's, it's in here. It says I, that they must use their name. I'm sorry if it got name. in there. I did. <laughs> Council Member Zappone. Yeah, uh, that was in the original one, and it was just use your name, not your true name. That but part was taken up. It says speakers must sign themselves in using their name. I, but not true name. That was the change. I, but it doesn't say true name. It just says name. Yep. Right. And That's then this next saying. section says true name. So there's two different versions. You want to clarify, Mr. Wright? Well, I'm trying to follow the thread of uh, the concern. Um, are you on? Either way, we can't verify their name. They could sign up as Mickey Mouse, and that could be their legal name. We have no way of proving it. So I just I have no interest in returning to that debate. Well, the general thrust was to take out the language that said uh, you had to declare your true first and last name. Right. We had an issue on that. Um, so we took out the first and last and just said true name. And that the intent is to carry that idea throughout the new rules. Um, I'm not sure if these amendments reflect that, but I thought they did. Um, Councilman Bingo. So what I'll say on this one right here, sign in using their name, I, I don't see anything that talked about the idea that, that we were concerned with about their true name. So sign in with whatever name you want. I, don't, I couldn't care less. You know, sign in as Mickey Mouse if that's what you want to do, and then come speak to us. I don't care. I think the next amendment down here, 216, talks about true name, and that's the one that I'll, I would not support. But this one here, I don't think, is on the true name, you know, the, the Dave M. rule, you know, so. Well, I, I, I agree with you, and I think that is likely the intent, but we have been here before where our rules are not buttoned up enough, and it can be interpreted in a myriad of ways. And so I don't understand why we even need to require it. Can I make a friendly amendment to say signing in using a name and not their name? I would we need, that. We I would need some it. way to call on yeah. somebody. And so a rose by it. any other name? Okay. Friendly amendment to... Does that require suspension of the rules? We'd have to suspend Is that the suspension rules of the rules, Mr. Wright? I make a motion to suspend the rules for the purposes of making this friendly amendment. Second. All those in favor of suspending the rules, indicate aye. by saying aye. Aye. Now on to the motion. Okay. My motion is on the, in the fifth line of this right here where it starts at speakers. Speakers must sign themselves in using a name. Second. It's been moved and second. All those, any commentary? Thanks all for in, catching that. Yeah. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay. That has been... Uh, amended. And just to speak on that, it's, it's just that we have run into this with our council rules in the past where the intent was not necessarily what, uh, what, was, um, what came across. And so things like that might seem silly, but they do have an impact on what we're doing. So. Okay. So you, we need another motion? We need, no, I think we are good. Yeah. Or 2-2-B, there needs to be 2-2-B. We still have to vote. Yes, yeah, we have to vote. So all those in favor of which Council Member Kakar spoke in opposition because he wants them to sign up at the same time, whether it's online or in person. Is that correct, Council Member Kakar? What was that last part? Sorry. That was my disagreement. That was oh, okay. his disagreement on the motion. So, <laughs> Council Member Zappone? I'll, I'll just speak to that because it's randomized. It doesn't matter if you sign up earlier or later. It's the equal chance. And same with the later one on 
legislative items, when you sign up, doesn't matter because you'll get called on for the next one. So I don't think I disagree with that need. Councilman Klitsky. The other rub on that is we close at 5 p.m. Uh, the building closes. So we can't really do in person until Monday morning. So that's why that's the way it is. Councilmember Katkar. Yeah, uh, Councilmember Zappone made, made a good point. I mean, I, I, I take that uh, take that very well. Um, as far as the 5 p.m., I, again, I think it's open forum. We don't have to have a ledge agenda. You could open it three weeks ahead and get right. people signing yeah. up. So I agree. I that think wasn't we could my... start it substantially yeah. earlier than Friday for signing up, just so people can plan ahead and, and be prepared. But anyway, I, I take your point very well. Ooh, we're doing gymnastics commentary. All right, so all those in favor, is that where we left off because we had of supporting that indicate by saying aye. 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 Any no's? That amendment passes. Thank you. Now, back to uh, the original, uh, what's in the packet, council rules. Uh, council commentary. Sorry, I don't know that we've taken 216A. Yeah, and you need to amend it. Yeah. Okay. I make the motion to suspend the rules for the purposes of amending rule 2.16A to remove true name and add oh. A name. Second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules for the purpose of that. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 I will make the motion to uh, amend rule 2.16A where it says, um, again, line five down, starting at speakers, where it says speakers must sign in using their true name. Speakers must sign in using a name. Second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any no's? Abstentions? That passes. Thank you. Now, back to council rules. Commentary. We have to vote on the rule still. Amendment B. I, I move to adopt Amendment B. As, yes. uh, as amended. As, I move to as amended. Amendment B. There, that's the whole amendment. That's the, that's the whole council rule. 2.16A. Uh, change to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll second that. Amendment B, which is 2.16A. Yeah. Okay. That, all right, you want to speak to that or just no? All right, all those in favor of adopting that indicate by saying aye. 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 Any no's? Abstentions? That passes. Any more amendments coming? Nope. Okay. With that, um, council commentary on the rules. Okay. <clears throat> So I have not supported limiting open forum my entire time here, um, and I think I have the most to gain uh, in the last few months, as many people have showed up. Uh, they have not been very uh, fond of some uh, legislation I brought forward, but um, I, I do agree with everybody who's coming in here. We need to take as much time as possible to listen to people who are coming in and speaking to us. Um, with that being said, I do want to point to uh, Washington State uh, gallery rules. My computer just went to sleep. Because I want to show uh, things in here, if we can scroll down just a little bit, where it says, uh, you know, maintaining order and decorum, uh, the application of the rules prohibits, among other things, signs, banners, placards, other props that could be construed as an effort to promote demonstrations, all weapons, including guns, uh, firearms, bladed instruments, or any other dangerous item audio or audible or visual signals from the gallery to the chamber floor, including whistling, calling, chanting, or waving, animals other than service animals, applause and or demonstrations, umbrellas, strollers, camera, tripod, sticks, or similar items that could block movement or take up seating space in the gallery, food and beverages, large overcoats, jackets, cases, bags, backpacks, and packages, small purses or cases may be allowed in the gallery at the discretion of Senate security after their contents are inspected for prohibited items, unattended children, Additionally, shut off your cell phones, remove your hat, and kids can't sit in the front row. Um, in, this, in this, I don't see that we are taking up any rules that are, that are in conflict with state rules um, or even federal guidelines. In, you know, uh, in Congress, they don't allow you to speak on, on bills. Um, I, again, while I do not support limiting open form whatsoever, I don't see this as us limiting open form that we currently have. I see it as expanding the open form, which I am supportive of. Um, 
we have hist uh, my first year here, we did it at the end um, of city council. The second year we moved it to the beginning, but when we moved it to the beginning, that's when we limited open forum to 15 for only two minutes. Um, but when it was at the end, it was an unlimited open forum. And I hope this is a step in that direction to again, get us to an unlimited open forum. I don't support limiting uh, the content of open forum. I think that if you wanna speak on international affairs, go for it. Um, uh, if, that's, if that's why you're here to speak to your government, Totally get it. I understand also that many people here, this is the only government you might get to speak to. You might not ever get to speak to a congressperson or a senator. This might be the place where you get to speak to your government. And we do have connections um, as city council members to people in higher office that we could take those messages to um, in the future. Um, and so while there are things that might not be about city business, I still see value in us allowing those uh, testimonies and comments to be, uh, to be spoken here in this, in this forum. Um, I do support uh, not allowing people uh, to stand. Um, I know that um, in some ways you can see that as a silent and respectful action. I also think that it is equally loud and disrespectful um, in many ways. And so um, I think, again, looking at uh, Washington State guidelines. This is well within um, what, what they have said as well. Um, with my council members, again, I don't believe their intent was ever to uh, silence uh, people with, with their rules. Um, and so uh, I am torn on this one because I don't want a limited open forum at all, but I do see this as a step uh, in, in allowing more speech um, and allowing more people to speak. Um, and so I think I'll probably support it tonight. Um, but uh, just... I do, I do think it, it is an incorrect statement to say we don't want to hear from you. Limited open forum is somewhat limited, but speaking on legislative items, there is no limit. There is a three minute limit, but every single person in the city of Spokane could sign up to testify on any one of the items, and we will sit here and we will listen to you. So that is my message. My commitment is to continue to listen, to continue to allow as much speech as possible, uh, even when you hate my guts. I appreciate it. I'm glad that you're here. And, uh, I hope to hear from you for the next two years as well. Any additional council commentary? Councilmember Dillon. Yeah, thank you, Councilmember Bingle, for that um, eloquent commentary, and I agree with you on a, a lot of fronts. And um, this has been a you know a tough one. I I think you know all my colleagues here um, really do want to listen and and want to hear from you and and try and meet folks. Um, where they're at, and I think, you know, I'm still new here, but I think it's very clear that there's a lot more that we can do. Um, doesn't matter whether you're a Democrat, Republican party, or center, or, um, you know, it's really about how we try and connect with you authentically, and it can often feel like there's this gap between us here, um, and I want to minimize that gap. So um, I will not be supporting um, you know, these rule changes. I think there's still a lot of good stuff in here. Uh, I would prefer to see open forum uh, at the beginning. Um, I think it uh, really is um, important for working families. I've been out in the audience too. Um, I've been you know, on the roller coaster of, of changes and I think there's certainly things that we can um, continue to fine tune. You know, these changes are, um, are, are not uh, set in stone. Um, I look forward to um, working on town halls, coming to neighborhoods, um, being more in district to hear more specific neighborhood concerns, um, and trying to work with all of you about ways that we can communicate better and be more accessible. Um, dissent is patriotic. Democracy can be uh, ugly <laughs> and beautiful. Uh, that's part of the job. That's the you know the public cost of public service, and so. Um, just thank you all for, for sticking this out. We've got more on the agenda tonight, um, and I really appreciate um, all the work that uh, did go into this and all of you. Councilmember Klitsky. I will be supporting the changes tonight, and it is not because I don't want to hear from you. I have been on both sides of this chamber, and I've noticed half of you have been standing and half of you have not. I've stood at different meetings, but I do understand the concerns with ableism and access and intimidation when that comes about. So um, that's why I'm, I'm going to reconcile that change. 
However, as a working mother who has had to testify on agenda items before this council for the last 20 years, sometimes bringing my baby, I also do have respect for the legislative process and the business that we have to do on council. Yes, we are paid to be here, and we have to be here while you're testifying, no matter what is on the agenda, but there are a lot of people here waiting to testify on an Im imminent piece of legislation that's not coming back. And so that is why I support that order of operations. Thank you. Any other council commentary? Gentlemen? Councilmember Sapone? Yeah. Okay. Um, speaking on this, I support this. These are rules that we spent a lot of time talking about and considering. Uh, this has been something that we talked about throughout the year, actually, and a lot of the genesis for a lot of these changes started with a council work group with former council president Beggs, former council mm -hmm. president Kinnear and I. Um, brainstorming these things we were intended to bring them forward to a retreat before this but the retreat never happened because we had turnover in the council office so a lot of these things have nothing to do with recent events or times um, these are things that have been debated and considered for a long time uh, with regards to the the changes around open forum i think it is something that happened uh, we used to have open forum at the end of the meeting i think it's a c real consideration that people are here tonight to testify on things for business tonight. And those people have to wait an extra 30 to 45 minutes if we put it at the beginning of a meeting. And um, I don't think that there's anything wrong with having open forum. I think it's just something that needs to happen after the business because there are people that can't be here all night long waiting to testify on things. I'm looking out here on lots of people who are still waiting to testify. And so uh, I thank lots of people for testifying. and. Uh, support your ability and to do that, but I think there is a misconception around a right to testify on open forum. Um, as Councilmember Bingle just showed, some rules around standing, it's not a right. Standing is not a right. If it is a right, then you can sue the city of Spokane for that right. Uh, you also could sue the Washington State Legislature and the United States Congress, which I'm sure that there are national organizations that have tried to sue those entities over those things. Uh, in addition, the United States Congress does not allow you to take your cell phone into the chambers. It also does not allow you to wear a hat in chambers, nor does it allow you to read a newspaper or write anything on your notes. So there are a lot of rights that are not constitutionally protected rights on the chambers. I just think that is a misconception that um, people in the public need to understand and hear is that this is just a way that we try to make sure that everyone has an equal opportunity to testify and speak on those things. I think that we're also missing a lot of other really great changes in these rules that have not gotten a lot of attention. One of those biggest changes is around amendments and substitutions and uh, creating a more transparent process around our amendments. One of the biggest complaints we get from members of the public is, I didn't see what this proposed amendment was until an hour before the meeting. This would require those amendments to be circulated the Friday before, to be circulated publicly, to be in front of the public for feedback before it comes up for a vote. Voting no on this would not allow those amendments to be required in the packet. And so I think that's a big consideration, Council Member uh, Dillon, that there are these, there's a lot of rules in here that I think uh, do a lot of great things about creating a great process. Um, and just the fact of moving it from the beginning to the end has an impact on other people too. So that's why I'm speaking in support of it. Well, first of all, I want to thank uh, Mr. Wright and Jacoby for really, and City Legal, who have wrote, went through these rules numerous times. I lost track of which reiteration this is, and public input. One of the questions was asked me was what happened in council chambers um, before Council President Kinnear left. Uh, impacted the rules. I said no, but it did show us that we have gaps in our rules. We had never been prepared for any unusual circumstances, so it made us aware. So on that level, thank you very much, because we didn't know what we didn't know going forward. I have to echo Councilmember Klitschke. We have tried to balance not silencing the public, but there is the legislative agenda in the business of the city, and then there's open forum. And again, there are people, we have not even gotten through all of our legislative agenda tonight, which is one of our primary responsibilities as well. So 
I am in support of this. We do not want to silence you. And again, I echo Councilmember Bingo. We are here to hear from you, and there are many ways that we can hear from you before you come into these chambers on Monday night. So, Councilmember Kliske, yes. I apologize for adding to this, but um, to um, Councilmember Zappone's point, um, one of the other changes that I was able to get in that we didn't have to make an amendment for is we're adding a two-week public, public comment period to legislation before it goes onto the agenda so that when you come down here and testify, there's a much higher likelihood that what you're testifying is the actual draft and not something that's been amended several times because it's already been out to the public for a couple weeks for written comment. We will have a chance to respond to people's comments, make changes, and then when you come down and testify, those changes will be reflected in the draft that you see on the agenda. So we are trying to add more ways for folks to interact with government. We'll have a plain language explainer and a web page for each piece of legislation and also a comment box that you can use to do written comment or you can email us or call us as you usually do. Councilmember Dillon. Yeah. Um, I think all of that is you know, absolutely fantastic. I think um, there's a lot of, of good things in here. Um, I did put forth an amendment earlier um, to keep open forum uh, as is um, and keep it at the beginning, and I'd like to entertain that motion. Motion to suspend, we have to suspend, uh, to suspend the rules. Motion to suspend the rules. I'll second that. It's been moved and second to suspend the rules. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Go with the motion. Yep. Um, um, this motion, um, again, you know, we have heard uh, overwhelming feedback um, to keep this portion as is. I think uh, all things considered, it's a, a fair compromise. Um, you know, when I look at my emails and uh, council uh, contacts that have been incoming um, from the community, uh, it again has been overwhelmingly um, supportive from the community, from your input to keep this at the beginning. Um, I really do think it is important to take this into consideration. Um, I think there's other things that we can do um, to kind of help uh, plan ahead, manage our agenda, uh, to accommodate um, you know, some of those speakers in a timely manner. Um, and again, I think a lot of the issues that do come up at open forum in the beginning, um, I was you know, really informed to hear about um, the challenges around 311 and trying to connect more with uh, Jules Helping Hands. Um, someone brought up uh, comp plan uh, concerns, uh, support for the um, uh, school uh, levy and bond. And so we do hear from a very diverse array of speakers uh, in open forum. And I love that those are things that we can uh, address uh, quickly. And I think that, again, there's more that we can do uh, as a council out in the community, out in public. Uh, to try and um, maybe minimize some of the tension and conflict uh, around uh, open forum. So put this motion forward to keep it as is at the beginning. Council members opposed? Yeah, I won't be supporting that for the reasons I stated earlier. I look uh, across the room and I see dozens of other people that also came to speak tonight that I don't think support that and would prefer to speak earlier. So I will speak against that motion. House Mayor Bingo. Yeah, um, Council Member's opponent and I obviously agree on everything tonight. And, uh, but uh, no, I, I agree with the points that he made where because I support a more open, open forum and allowing commentary on anything around the world, I think it makes sense that we focus on the business of the city first and then allow it to be opened up for open forum to testify on anything. So I'll be uh, voting against this motion as well, um, and, but in the future supporting more ways that we can expand open forum at the end of the night. Any other commentary? I will also not be supporting this tonight. Um, we have heard from people, but there are others we have heard from as well that they are in support of open forum being at the end of the meeting this is a city of over 220,000 people. I appreciate everyone who comes down here and all the support that's come in, but there are always the balancing act of meeting the needs of all of our citizens. And we have just agreed as council, we're never gonna do that, but I wanna encourage you, do not follow council members the opponent of suing the city. So <laughs> that I do not support. 
It's been moved and seconded. Um, all those. Who seconded? I think I did. Council members seconded. You second in the motion? <laughs> okay. okay. So we suspended the motion. You spoke to the motion. All those in support of Council Member uh, Dillon's amendment indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed indicate by saying no. No. No, no the motion fails. Any other commentary? We're ready for the vote. I'll, I'll say one last thing. Okay. I think I'm going to vote in support of it tonight. And I think, again, as going through and hearing, um, I, I, I think it's 95% good, the changes that are being made. Uh, you know, some hang-ups here and there. And so I don't want to let that small amount keep me from voting on some uh, thoughtful changes that were made by a number of um, council members and staff. And so I appreciate the work that went in. So tonight I think I'll be voting in support. Please prepare to vote. All right. Thank you all. Let's go on to Ms. Fister. The next one, we are deferring resolution 2024-007 at the request of the school district council member. I need a motion for deferral on that. So yes. moved. Moved and seconded. Will somebody make the deferral? Chair can't make the motion. I made the motion. Oh, Mr. Yeah. Okay, thank yeah. you. Second. Second. Council member uh, Catcart. Just looking for clarification. I don't know if anybody from the district is here, but what is going to change with the proposal in the next two weeks that this would have to be deferred? Council member Dillon. It's a long night. It's a busy night. Um, I think there were folks from the district that did want to come down and testify, and um, just with the kind of stacked agenda to possibly wait. Okay. Mm. Interesting. Uh, just council president, I might ask our policy advisor, I had received an email from our um, city attorney uh, with concerns about testimony on um, items such as this that support a ballot measure. And I would like more clarity and for the council to have more clarity on whether we allow testimony on those items or if use of, uh, if that's considered use of city facilities mm. for campaigning. Mm. So I would suggest if you are to defer, that you defer both of them so that we can get some clarity on that for all council members. Uh, Councilman Keller. So 2021, this council adopted a resolution. Did we allow testimony then? I don't, I don't recall. I'm I don't just... recall either. And that was my request of okay. our city attorney to get back to all of us about that so that we have. And so does that apply to statement. all or just this, this one? To both uh, oh. resolution 2024-007 and 008. But what about the charter amendment? That is next week. But, 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 but yeah, it's yeah. the same yeah, concern. same okay. question. All right. Yes. So it's been moved and seconded. Uh, can, I, uh, can I adjust my motion to yes. say defer 007 and 008 for two weeks until February 5th okay. so that we can get some clarity from city legal? And you still second that council member as opponent? I think. Oh, I did. Uh, mm -hmm. Bill. Schools and library. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Councilmember Klitsky, you had a comment? No. <laughs> oh, all right. Sorry. Point, point of Council clarification. Yes, uh, with the vote we just took on our rules, does that put our rules in effect as of now, or does that happen at a later date? Our rules. Can we make it next week? <laughs> <laughs> say say I, that again. Uh, can we make it next week? I don't know. That's the question can we're we asking. Can we make it? I, yeah. is it? I, I think so. Are, are, is that, I mean, legally, are you mm -hmm. confident that that's the case? It, Next, the next no, meeting. I'm not confident, <laughs> but um, I think for the sake okay. of continuity, that we we try to start fresh with the new rules next okay. week. Okay. Right. All those in favor of the deferral of resolution 007 008 indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any noes? Those are deferred. We said two weeks. That would put us at February the fifth. All right, on to resolution 009, uh, Ms. Fister. Resolution 2024-9 of solidarity with those whose lives have been forever altered by the conflict between Israel and Hamas. We envision a world where every life is cherished and valued as equal, where all humanity lives in peace, freedom, and safety. 
Yes. <clears throat> okay. The first three signed up to testify on this item are James Johnson, Union Carter, and then Aslan Croft. Good evening, James Johnson. Most folks know me as JJ. Um, I've been involved in numerous civic adventures over the last several years. Most recently, I was a director and second vice president for the Spokane County Human Rights Task Force. Um, I am currently the acting chair for a neutral political organization called Citizens for a Safe Spokane that you'll all be hearing more about soon. Um, I'm not here to demand anything. I'm not here to stand and create a distraction or rudely turn my back when someone is saying something that I don't agree with. What I am here tonight is to thank Council President Wilkerson, Council Member Sapone, and our hearts go out to you and your family, and Council Member Bingle for proving that you are listening. Uh, you brought together a panel of individuals who are very passionate about the topic discussed in this resolution. Uh, varying views. You brought this panel together and you listened. And eventually we came to an agreement unanimously on what the resolution should say. Uh, I hope the City Council also unanimously approves the resolution. There is one piece, and I don't know if I saw the final version, but the website for the Spokane County Human Rights Task Force, which is now called Human Rights Spokane, should be humanrightsspokane.org, not Spokane County Human Rights Task Force. And I apologize to Council Member Zappone for not being accurate when he asked me if that change was going to take place. I didn't think it would happen quickly, and I thought the original website would stay in force, but it's not. So I'm going to ask that you make that one single change. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Union Carter, and then Aslan Croft, and then Cheryl Stone. Um, good afternoon, Council. Uh, my name is Union. I'm from District 1. I live in the Hilliard area. And I'm also here on behalf of the Peace and Justice Action League of Spokane. Um, but also as a person who's concerned about the genocide we are collectively witnessing against Palestine and the people in Gaza. Um, I'd like to thank the individuals who came together and met regularly to form this language and this resolution. Your work does not go unnoticed. Um, when I came to Spokane and call it for college, Back in 2019, from one of the most diverse cities in the state, I was experiencing a lot of things, but culture shock was one of the main ones. Spokane did not seem hip to the culture, and I wondered what my life would be like here as a young black woman. Five years later, I'm still trying to figure it out. While there have been great strides in the efforts of diversity, equity, and the general openness to accept people as they are, Spokane still struggles. Um, there's a level of critical analysis that goes into these things, more than getting the right person into office, on a board, or even just a picture to point and say, we're not that bad. It's a culture shift that must happen, one that truly embraces people from all types of backgrounds for who they are and allows them to show up authentically without hate and ignorance being spewed at them. In October, sorry, I have mascara in my eye. Ugh. Um, in October, when looking at the face of genocide, this council passed a resolution to stand with the Israeli government and against people who have now suffered over 100 days of bombings, who shield their children, their partners, themselves, and others from the looming threat of death. The people who, when given the access to the internet, get on social media and beg us to call for a ceasefire. While those bombs may not be dropping in the city of Spokane, literally, there is still an impact felt here. Tonight, there is a chance to step in the direction of acceptance and the direction of rebuilding our community instead of fanning the flames of Islamophobia and anti-Semitism. Tonight, we have the option to stand in solidarity with our Muslim, Arab, and Jewish community members. Tonight, we take a jab at our new city motto, in Spokane, we all belong. 
for it is not our reality, but something to aspire to. I urge you to pass this resolution, not only because it's obvious to me and many of those behind me that it is the right thing to do, but because we also want, because you also want Spokane to become a place where everyone can actually belong. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Aslan Croft, then Cheryl Stone, then Juliet Brainty. Good evening, City Council. I wanted to say thank you for revising this resolution and including so many different voices in its revision. I appreciate being included in, in the process. I want to thank Councilman Zapone, Councilman Bingle, and Council President Wilkerson for listening to the voices from my community. My sincere condolences to you, um, Councilman Zapone, and for your family. Um, I want to thank Councilman Dillon for his efforts to work with our elected leaders for ceasefire in Gaza. I want to thank Temple Beth Shalom and Congregation Emmanuel, the rabbi, and all the Jewish members uh, for working alongside Muslims for Community Action and Palestinian Americans. Although we may not have agreed on everything in this resolution, and there are still places in it that I, I wish um, would have been different, it still warms my heart knowing that I have made new Jewish friends for life and that Spokane is a diverse place where Jewish, Muslim, Israeli, and Palestinians can live alongside each other peacefully as one day, inshallah, will happen in Palestine. I continue to pray for the Jewish hostages to be returned home safely to their families. I pray for the safety and prosperity of every Jewish person in the world, just as I pray for Palestinians to live safely in their homes. May this new resolution be a step forward for Spokane. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Cheryl Stone, then Juliet Barenti, and then Diana Corcanian Souders. Forgive me, I'm fading a little bit, not feeling so well. So I do want to thank Council President Wilkerson, Councilman Bengal, and Councilman Zapone for assembling a group of people with the most diverse, passionate uh, disagreements and spending a month together and coming to this resolution. I support it 100%. Uh, <clears throat> once again, you know, this is a, <clears throat> there's no good answer to this and no good answer to war and everyone has their own <clears throat> strong feelings. But for instance, Aslan, who we just heard from, I had an opportunity to really feel a, an alliance and closeness to and I think if all of us could do that and spend a little time together, we'd see that our differences aren't that, that much that far apart. And I commend you for assembling this panel and working with us and listening to us. And also knowing that the important thing is that we feel safe in Spokane. And that inflammatory remarks and things that, uh, you know, are inciting people is not, it's not healthy. And it doesn't make any of us feel safe, not the Muslim community, not the Jewish community. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Juliet, then Diana, and then Pam Silverstein. I am the daughter of a Nazi Holocaust survivor and cousin to many survivors of the October 7th Holocaust at Kibbutz Be'eri. I'm here to speak about the resolution that, among other things, equates the Hamas kidnapping and continued imprisonment of a one-year-old baby from his home with the imprisonment by Israel of people who have murdered or attempted to murder Jews. You have arrived at this immoral equivalency because you negotiated with modern-day Holocaust deniers. The groups that you invited into these negotiations who have no connection to the region or the conflict deny that on October 7th, Hamas terrorists murdered, raped, beheaded, and burned alive Israeli civilians. If these groups had been neo-Nazis or skinheads who denied the atrocities of the Nazi Holocaust, you would never have let them in the door, much less invited them to participate in developing an official city document. But you gave them a seat at the table. But make no mistake, their denial of and justification for the atrocities of October 7th are no different, and now you have invited them in, there is no going back to say that denying the Holocaust of October 7th or the 1940s is unacceptable. You have made it acceptable. If you think that after months of disruption, harassment, and bullying by these groups, that giving them even part of what they want will make them go away so you can get back to city business, you are wrong. They will be emboldened and they, it will get worse especially since they don't actually care about Palestinians in Gaza or anywhere else. It's just a means to their political ends. Just look at what these groups are doing elsewhere around the country. These groups' tactics have included blocking roads to international airports on New Year's Day, endangering passenger planes by launching balloons over runways, blocking highways that delayed the delivery of organ transplants to hospitals, 
and vandalizing Jewish-owned stores, targeting a cancer hospital and attacking the White House gates while screaming Allahu Akbar and Intifada revolution. And just yesterday, right here at the North Town Mall, they shouted and demonstrated to shut it down for Palestine. These groups believe that by obstructing crucial social services and public spaces, they effectively challenge the status quo, that any inconvenience caused to innocent individuals is justified in the pursuit of societal transformation. That is why, as Seattle-based Palestinian-American journalist Tariq Roof so eloquently put it when his cohorts blocked Seattle's northbound I-5 the other week, we are going to inconvenience every single person who doesn't give an F about Gaza until they give an F, end quote. The trajectory of anti-Israel protests across America suggests a deeper, more unsettling trend, far from a legitimate expression of opposition. They've morphed into a troubling display of ideological extremism and physical violence cloaked in the guise of social justice. The reckless tolerance of this continuing level of radicalism and disruption does a profound disservice to the principles of democracy and civil discourse. Whatever you believe the rights and wrongs of the Israeli-Arab conflict are, Thank allowing you. demonstrators... Your, your time is up. Supporting genocidal Thank terror you. organizations like Hamas in the City Council sends a very dangerous Thank moment. you. Next up is Diana Korkanian Souders, Pam Silverstein, and then Will Hewlings. Good evening. My name is Diana Korkanian Souders. I'm a member of the Jewish community and a parent of children in Spokane Public Schools. I'm here to support the resolution that clearly states our city's commitment to stand up against hate, anti-Semitism, and Islamophobia. I want to thank the dedicated and very patient city council members and their staff who supported the creation of this resolution. I especially want to share gratitude for our Muslim sisters and brothers who worked on crafting it. After October 7th, a group from Spokane had an opportunity to listen to grieving mothers from Israel and Palestine, mothers who have lost children to the conflict. Their message was clear. They implored us not to import the conflict to our cities. Instead, they asked us to acknowledge and empathize with the grief the other is experiencing and always approach each other with compassion. Sadly, in many cities, including parts of our Spokane community, that basic compassion was lacking, and there were those that sought to justify massacres, rape, and hostage-taking in Israel committed by Hamas as acts of liberation or dismissed as conspiracies. Similarly, there has been a shameful lack of compassion and empathy for the death and displacement of tens of thousands of Palestinian civilians in Gaza, resulting from the Israeli government's retaliation against Hamas. This is why it's inspiring to see our community come together on this resolution. Unlike other cities here in Spokane, we can move beyond slogans or sound bites and actually take a stance against those who would use the conflict to stoke anti-Semitism or incite Islamophobia. This is the hard work that requires people to sit with each other and empathize with their pain through dialogue and conversation, not simply add to the destructive echo chambers that plague social media. It's this difficult work that we were able to accomplish that actually creates a welcoming, safe, and inclusive space for everyone in our community. For those of us here who have family and loved ones in Israel and Palestine, may this be a sign of things to come. May we all see a secure Israel and a free Palestine, and may Spokane remain a welcoming home to all. Thank you. Thank you. Pam Silverstein, Will Hewlings, and then Scott Ward. I'm Pam Silverstein, a past president of Temple Beth Shalom, but I'm here speaking um, and reading what Ram, uh, Rabbi Tamar Molino was going to offer today. Rabbi uh, Tim Molino is the rabbi of two synagogues here in Spokane, Temple Beth Shalom and Congregation Emmanuel, which serves a large portion of our Jewish community here. So she says that she's urging the council to pass resolution number 2024-0009. She had the privilege of contributing to the text of this resolution and attests to the fact that the meetings were painful because of the extremely divergent views on the war in Israel and Gaza. However, two common aspects emerged from our discussions. All of us felt anger, grief, fear, heartbreak caused by the war, and all of us have deep concern from the resulting Islamophobia and anti-Semitism, which is rising all over the United States and in Spokane. I will let others speak to the Islamophobia, but according to currently reported statistics, anti-Semitic incidents have increased over 330% in the United States since October 7th. 
It has manifest, manifested as swatting threats to at least 100 synagogues and Jewish institutions, verbal expressions in private and public conversations, threatening marches with anti-Semitic slogans, and violent physical attacks against Jews. Here in Spokane, our children are experiencing in school from other students and occasionally from teachers. Adults in our community are experiencing it in the workplace, and it is rearing its head in the midst of friendships and allyships we have nurtured for many years. We see it on stickers and flyers on the streets of Spokane. Our Jewish community has felt alone and under attack, and needless to say, it has not eased the collective trauma we experienced three years ago when our synagogue building was vandalized. We recognize that Spokane City Council does not have the power to wrangle the Middle East, but you do have the power to affect responses to hatred and bigotry in our, in our city. We ask that you pass this resolution, and even more than the words it contains, follow through on the commitments it describes. Allocate resources, encourage reporting of hate crimes, investigate them aggressively, and hold perpetrators responsible. Call on city administration and other Spokane institutions to educate and act against anti-Semitism and Islamophobia, and to continue educating about, promoting, and protecting cultural diversity in Spokane. One of our ancient sages, Hillel, taught, if I am not for myself, who will be for me? If I am only for myself, who am I? And if not now, when? As Jews, we say that anti-Semitism is unacceptable in any form, in any place, and we have to speak up and defend ourselves. Thank you. Will Hewling, Scott Ward, and then Justice for All. Good evening. My name is Will Hewlings, and I live downtown. Um, I'm just going to say uh, I am against Islamophobia and anti-Semitism, especially since me as a minority, I've had crazy people in Spokane actually call me a Nazi and a white supremacist. Actually, people that come to city council. So, uh, president, yeah, I'm a minority. So... But anyways, let's, let's remind you guys what happened October 7th. So on October 7th, Israel experienced a catastrophic act of genocide when armed Hamas terrorists invaded the country via land, air, and sea. This act of genocide, which coincided with the Jewish holiday of Simchat, began with the destruction of Israel's security fence with heavy weaponry, enabling the terrorists to infiltrate the southern borders, communities, and carry out atrocities on the residents of the entire area. During this massacre, the terrorists murdered more than 1,200 innocent civilians including infants, the elderly, and people attending a music festival. At five in the morning, these young people were out celebrating, and they got murdered. So I, I, I stand with uh, uh, calling that out. But what I, since October 7th, I've seen a group, a political group. As you can well see, I'm wearing a red hat. I'm obviously part of the GOP. I'm a Republican. You don't see our Republicans sitting here doing half the stuff they do. And because of what they did, I even told them, you're going to see real, what real fascists do. Now they're going to silence you. They're going to do all this stuff, which you guys are going to do. So as a veteran, it disgusts me. And then I get silenced. I get disrespected. And yeah. You guys need to wake up. Thank you. Council President, you might entertain, entertain a motion to extend the meeting. Make the motion to extend to 11 to allow for commentary. Is there a second? Second. Is I'm sorry, what was that, Council Second. Second. It's been moved and second to extend uh, Council to 11 p.m. tonight. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any no's? 
Any extensions? Council is extended. We'll do, well, Scott will be next and then Justice for All and then Sherry Barnett. Scott Ward, uh, Spokane Valley. I live and work most of my life in Spokane though. Uh, the new resolution is a vast improvement over the October 9 resolution that was passed without any Palestinian, Arab, or Muslim voices. The new resolution does five important things. It condemns anti-Semitism and it condemns Islamophobia. As someone who has uh, people that I care about who have been affected by both, um, it's important that we call that out. Um, as someone who has taught a course on the, on the Holocaust, who has visited the Anne Frank House, um, and who has visited the Holocaust Museum, anti-Semitism is appalling, and so is the Islamophobia that so many in our community have faced since 9-11, but accelerated again since October 7th. Uh, this also expresses concern for the lives of Palestinian civilians, states that all human beings should have uninhibited access to water, food, health care, medical supplies, electricity, and basic needs, calls for the unconditional release of all civilians who are being held hostage or unlawfully detained or inca in incarcerated, and demands the humane treatment of prisoners, calls upon local, state, and federal officials to support efforts towards an immediate and sustained peace in Israel and Palestine, and calls for the safe return of those displaced. With these improvements in mind, we encourage the City Council to approve the new resolution. However, this resolution does fall short in some ways. The framing still paints Palestinians via Hamas as the aggressor, and Israelis as acting in self-defense. The language of, of Hamas attack versus Israeli military response is problematic. This sets the framing for the entire document as Palestinians are framed as violent aggressors, and Israelis is simply responding to a violent attack. This resolution is still devoid of important historical context, including the Nakba, the illegal occupation, the settler colonial violence, the mass displacement, the disproportionate genocidal violence committed by the Zionist State of Israel. 30,000 plus have died in the bombing in Gaza. Hundreds in the West Bank. Children on an unprecedented scale. Journalists, medical workers on an unprecedented scale. The, re the resolution never explicitly implicates in Israel for any wrongdoing. While they say Hamas attacked, they don't name Israel when they're referencing the targeting of civilians, the restriction of access to water, electricity, food, and medical care in Gaza. They don't name Israel when referencing the unlawfully detained. The result is a document that can only be understood by those who are already well-educated on the history and current genocide. Many might not have a clue about the siege of Gaza and have no idea the resolution is when it's referring to uh, 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 restricting water, food, electricity, and medical care. How many community members aren't aware that Israel holds thousands of pal Palestinian prisoners with, without due process, including hundreds of children who have faced documented instances of torture? Thank you. Time is up. Thank you. Justice for All, Sherry Barnett and Wendy Fishburne. Hello, my name is Justice for All, and I'm a practicing non-absolutist. That means I do not practice and I try avoiding using words like, that have absolutes, like always and never. It means that the truth always lies somewhere in the gray area in between the black and white. That doesn't mean that things land in the middle because actually equality is more of an absolute, but equity is more something we can achieve. But with, through power of understanding, we are able to come through to restorative and transformative justice solutions by using understanding. When we use absolutes to describe human beings, groups, and countries, we are inaccurate in our description. We as a people are not a monolith, and we all have the ability to grow and change. And often we do not represent, you know, the countries or states that we are part of, but, you know, happen to exist within them because that's where we may have been born. I want to bring up a, a quote from Malcolm X. Do not be in a hurry to condemn because he does not do what you do or does not think as you think or as fast. There was a time when you didn't know what you know today. We're going to hear a lot of speakers, and we've heard a lot of speakers even through the, the resolution when we were working that, that said, you know, very absolutist statements, blatant statements about people um, that were just blatantly racist. I want to be able to recognize that when this happens within these chambers, I want counsel to remember that blanket statements towards other countries, towards people 
who you know have a lot less power, um, do cause violence, do cause Islamophobia, do cause uh, anti-Semitism. It was a lot of work being in those meetings, which I was also a part of. Um, I appreciate you know uh, Council Member Zapone and Council Member uh, Wilkerson for putting that, or Council President Wilkerson for putting that together. Um, it was very good to, um, to participate in that, and I, I'm happy to have had the invite. Um, but of course, there's a more we can always do when it comes down to our understanding. So I'm really happy that it was included that uh, Council also pledged to continue their education about world events, because we know that you know these countries existed before October 7th. We know that this conflict has been a hot-button topic for a long time, actually my, my entire life. And so... It's important for us to, to deepen our understandings so we don't live in absolutes, so we don't get stuck in the trap of you know, doing things that will lead to oppression, will lead to racism, will lead to things that we say we're against, but when we don't think about our actions, we end up supporting. Thank you. Thank you. Sherry Barnett, Wendy Fishburne, and Dennis Flynn. Thank you. I'm Sherry Barnett, President Wilkerson, and all members of the City Council. And I wish I would have known and been able to go to that. This is something that's really important for me to talk to you because I am older than Israel. And Israel was originally a, a territory governed by Britain under the Balfour Declaration, because they helped in World War I, they promised them a homeland. They were in charge of Christians, Jews, and Arabs in the Holy Land, and a huge amount of property. All right, Second World War comes, and there's the Holocaust, and there's a destruction of Jews that's unbelievable. And many Jews were trying and, and were getting to the Holy Land. They were being restricted by countries all over the world. Their, their ships were not making it easily. They came there, and people are saying, well, they don't have any place in the Holy Land. Read the Bible. That's what it tells you. And also it tells you that in the last days, they're going to come back to that Holy Land. And God's going to plant them there. And I pray that all the nations will have peace, but I don't see that it's actually going to happen as far as prophecies go. But as far as this city goes, may we have peace. May we have kindness toward one another. But when people try to say, and blame Israel because I've seen them attacked by the Palestinians in 1948 when they were born, in 1963, I think 1967 was a six-day war, am I right? They have been attacked, and as soon as they start winning the war, the United Nations and the world comes and said, you've got to stop, you've got to stop. There has to be peace. Thank you. Thank you. Wendy Fishburne, Dennis Flynn, and then Dave M. Good evening. I also wish I would have been included in that conversation, but thank you for this time of reflection. We're being misled. Our emotions, compassion, and our values for life and freedom and justice are being wielded against us by a terrorist group. In a confusing twist, the social justice movement is now pitted against the Jews and the tiny Jewish nation. We are today sandwiched between Martin Luther King Jr. Day, a staunch supporter of Israel, and Holocaust Remembrance Day this Saturday, a day to pause and reflect on the real horrors that happened when racism was institutionalized and carried out by mobs in death camps and gas chambers. During the Civil Rights Movement, Jews stood in strong solidarity with Martin Luther King Jr. And Dr. King said of Israel, peace for Israel means security and we must stand with all our might to protect its right to exist. 
I see Israel, and never mind saying it, as one of the great outposts of democracy in the world, and a marvelous example of what can be done, how desert land can be transformed into an oasis of brotherhood and democracy. Peace for Israel means security, and that security must be a reality. Dr. King. Truly, we're being played by a propaganda machine that's inciting violence and division, where there should be alliances. Hamas is not for minorities. Hamas is the definition of racism, slavery, and violent oppression. They've enslaved the people of Gaza, stolen billions from Palestinians. They are a genocidal terrorist group who would kill any LGBTQI person without hesitation. Hamas's view of women was on full display when they gleefully raped girls to death at a peace-loving dance festival. They do not represent social justice. This distortion and falsehood, those crying victim are the violent aggressors. Those crying genocide are the ones who want genocide. Those crying liberate are the ones who represent the most oppressive ideology on the planet. To create a false moral equivalence between Hamas and Israel is to empower their means and their methods. This battle is not about numbers and proportionality, but ideologies of life and freedom or death and destruction. I understand the good intention of the resolution you're proposing today, but the impact validates that false equivalence. You can't appease terror. You know they will keep coming. Don't be confused. You were right to stand with Israel after the massacre. Don't be bullied into empowering terrorist tactics. Say no. Enough is enough, and we need to get back to the business of the city and civilized discourse. What you said in the beginning was enough, and never again is now. Thank, Thank you. you. Dennis Flynn, Dave M., and then Ashley Calderon. Council, my name is Dennis Flynn. I live near St. Charles. I applaud diverse community members coming together to collaborate on a statement. I don't know where you come down, and I'm not going to judge based on what information you've gone out to educate yourself and come to an informed decision. I have done my own and know where I stand. Um, I would like to note it should have been completely unnecessary to collaborate and make this resolution tonight. Uh, by reading here what I wrote to you all back on October 15th, Spokane City Council, quite honestly, I'd prefer you make no proclamations that have nothing to do with the business of running our city, whether it is in support of a country which recently experienced a terrorist attack, a country experiencing an invasion, whether or not Idaho supports medically abhorrent pregnancy terminations, racist conduct in a faraway jurisdiction, or sexual activity performed by consenting adults. The only relevant topics for any proclamation coming from this council are those within your purview, which should be limited to the business of the city, no matter how overinflated you falsely believe your sphere of influence extends. Evidence in support of my position, you have now virtue signaled yourself into the corner of having expressed support for Israel, and undoubtedly, the ignorant narcissists are sure to take you to the woodshed for not supporting the terrorists instead. I actually fully agree with most of your proclamation, but I suspect the communists who have responsibility for little, but anything, little of anything but themselves are going to have, shall we say, a differing opinion. My suggestion to you, steal your spine and don't equivocate a terrorist attack with anything. Call a thing for what it is, in this case an atrocity. Trying to walk back what you have already birthed will not only put you in the position of looking foolish, which you already do for having put yourself in this position in the first place, but the question now is, do you want to look like the principled fool or the, fully, or the unprincipled fool? FYI, I fully support each of you as individuals using your bully pulpit to express your thoughts, but collaboratively and unanimously proclaiming our city's intent as a council is something that should be done carefully, deliberately, and very infrequently, in my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Dave M., then Ashley Calderon, and then Liz Moore. Dave, if you're still online, can you hit star three? I don't see Dave. Um, Ashley, I'm going to unmute you. Go ahead, Ashley. 
Hello, City Council. My name is Ashley Calderon. I live in Spokane Valley. I appreciate this council for hearing the community and making a new statement regarding the ongoing genocide in Gaza. The people of the city deserve to feel safe, supported, and that they belong, and that this was the right step forward. I urge you to support this resolution. However, this resolution still needs more clarification. This is not a war between Hamas and Israel. The Palestinian people are not Hamas. This is a genocide. This resolution does not properly hold accountable the reality of what the Zionist state of Israel has been doing and is doing over 76 years of occupation since the Nakba land grab, displacement, and killings of 1948. Hold accountable the state that has held strict control over the water, electricity, food, medical care, and movement in Gaza. Hold accountable the targeting of citizens, journalists, and doctors, imprisoning Palestinian citizens without due process, including children, hundreds of children, documented to have been tortured. It has been 107 days of ongoing destruction and slaughter. How much more of Gaza and its people must perish before it becomes clear to you that what is happening is a slaughter pep perpetrated by the Zionist state of Israel? Call for an immediate ceasefire. Call for the establishment of a Palestinian state, free Palestine. Thank you. Dave, uh, are you online? If you're online, can you hit star three? After Dave, Liz Moore and Adir Bloom. No, Dave, Liz. Hello again. Um, Council Member Zappone, I meant to say earlier, my condolences to you and your family. Um, I had the experience of being part of the process of creating, co-creating this resolution. And um, it was a real a process that included real human care for each other, as well as real moments of pretty strong discomfort, um, after which almost everyone continued to show up. And we know that that's not always the case. So I just want to salute and appreciate, why am I saluting? I don't know, just, uh, just appreciate, um, without the salute, um, all the folks who were part of the process um, and who continued to show up after um, some real discomfort and through real discomfort in really human ways. I particularly want to lift up the way that the resolution begins by holding the collective grief that has followed the Hamas attack and Israel's military response. And um, moving to the end, lift up the commitment and calling on the city administration, businesses, educational institutions, and other institutions to proactively educate and act against anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, and other forms of hate and oppression as well, and to continue um, education and understanding of cultural diversity in Spokane. And I do really hope that this resolution is something that is implemented not just sort of as a, okay, we're implementing, we're passing it and it's done, but that these, that these commitments are really lifted up, um, including the um, support for the Office of Civil Rights, Equity, and Inclusion so that hate crimes have a place to be reported and investigated, um, and other commitments in here as well. So I thank you for... Um, your attention, um, Council Members Zappone and Council Madam President over there. Um, thank you, and Council Member Bingle for uh, participating. Um, and appreciate again just closing with the people who are willing to come into that room and um, be really uncomfortable together and then come back again. So thank you. Adir Bloom, Larry Andrews, and Lillian McGaw. Hello, city council members. My name is Adir Bloom, and I am a local anti-Zionist Jew, member of the Jewish Voice for Peace, and member of the Inland Northwest Coalition for the Liberation of Palestine. I'm here to speak in favor of this resolution. This resolution is a significant improvement on council member Bingle's October resolution, which gave unconditional support to the apartheid state of Israel. 
Unlike the original, original resolution, this new version recognizes the humanity of both Israelis and Palestinians and vaguely acknowledges the ongoing abuses of human rights. I would, however, like to point out, as many of my comrades are pointing out today, that this resolution is incredibly milk toast and is a testament to systemic racism and Islamophobia in Spokane. If the city council can make extremely charged statements such as Israel has a right to exist, then why can the city council not resolve to explicitly support a ceasefire? A call for a ceasefire is the bare minimum here, given that Palestinians have been suffering from occupation, genocide, ethnic cleansing, and apartheid for over 75 years. I would like to commend Councilmember Dillon for being the sole politician in Spokane willing to do what is right and call for that ceasefire. As an anti-Zionist Jew, I would like to give an aside that supporting Palestine is not and never has been anti-Semitic. The state of Israel does not represent the entire Jewish community, and anti-Zionism has existed in the Jewish community ever since Zionism was invented in the 19th century. Spokane is in a unique position as one of the largest cities in the state of Washington. We had an opportunity to be a beacon that shines for human rights, justice, and lasting peace, to show that we care about others and not just ourselves. This resolution does kind of fall short of that mark. Again, I do support the passing of this resolution because Spokane citizens can't really expect better from their council members. But the city council ought to have never passed the original resolution in support of Israel and should have written a resolution that takes a firm stance against genocide rather than equivocating and trying to please everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Larry Andrews, Lillian McGaw, and Tare Bear Eagle. Address, uh, my name is Larry Andrews. I address Council President Wilkerson. When I was in high school, I had to give a report on the Holocaust. And I want you to picture yourself here in Canada. And I'm going to say that I am a Catholic and Betsy Wilkerson is black. Okay. If the Canadians decided that we couldn't exist and we had to be removed from our society, uh, how would we feel, okay? They start sending rockets over, and our children can't play in our backyards anymore. So we build an iron dome to stop all these rockets. But they still come through. And then finally, they come through and they killed 12,000 of us, okay? Now, you tell me what we would do. Just like World War II, we went in and removed all these cities and cleared it out. It's not the Palestinians that are the problem. In a way, it is, because they're not bringing the Hamas people out to stand and stand for what they believe. But they stand for killing every Jewish person out there. You cannot live with that. We cannot live with that. Luckily, in Spokane, we don't have to deal with that. But over there, it's a reality. And the reality is so sharp that you cannot stop and see it. If you look at all the tunnels, all the money we've spent over there, they built tunnels to haul all these missiles to shoot at the Israeli people over and over and over. The only way you can stop it, you got to cut the head of the snake off and get rid of it. That's what we did during World War II. We literally obliterated city after city to clean it out. And it's a terrible thing. It is unconscionable, but if you don't come in and clean it out, it's consistently coming after you. And it's a terrible thing. War is a terrible thing. And none of us want to have it, but you can't let it happen. And we can't live with this anymore like this. These people, you got to call out the problem and get rid of the problem until the Constitution changes for the Palestinian people and recognize the Jewish state, you're going to have this. 
It's got to end. And the only way it's going to end is to get rid of it. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Your name was typed in wrong. I won't make the same mistake again. Thank you. Lillian McGaw, Tare Bear Eagle, and August. And Lillian, I think you're online. If you can hit star three, there you are. Go ahead, you're Great. unmuted. All right. Regarding resolution 2024-0009, I wanted to first thank you for this new resolution. It's a greatly needed change from the original. However, I and many others, after reading the resolution, recognize crucial pieces that still need to be written and acted upon for all of the innocent lives that have been lost. The death toll of Palestinians is past 25,000. These are 25,000 innocent human beings that have been slaughtered in the Israeli bombings. I do not understand why it is so hard for the city council to call for a ceasefire. In doing so, the many who have been displaced can safely come back to their homes, as well as that this will start the process to bring back hospitals, food, drinkable water, electricity, and more to those who have lost these rights due to the bombings. There will never be a lasting peace while millions of Palestinians are living under Israeli occupation without necessary access to self-determination, sovereignty, and full civil, social, economic, and political rights. Again, thank you for editing the resolution from before to where it is now. But don't let this be the end. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Ta Ray Bear Eagle, August, and then John Alder. Oh, my God. Uh, Talray Bear Eagle, no. Okay. August. Okay. John. John Alder, Spokane. I'm glad we're getting a new resolution. Well, I'm not necessarily taking the sides of Hamas who killed 1,400. Nor did Israel, who his last count killed over 25,000 Palestinians. I'm asking in the future, you make absolutely no resolution at all, or any kind of government, any kind of resolution that supports any action, especially military, that results in the death of innocent people who are doing nothing more than minding their own business and living their lives. If you make any resolutions in the future, let's make some that for housing for all, food for all, universal health, education for all, or best of all, peace is the only resolution you should take. Never anything for violence again. Thank you. Next up is Tavita Faksiki, and then Zach McGuckin, and then Nagmana Shirazi. My name is Tavita Fakasiki, uh, just to make that clear. Um, I want to make a comparison to uh, what we're doing, and thanks to Paul Dillon uh, for this uh, future ordinance. I just want to say that, um, again, we have to take the statue down. John R. Monahan was a war criminal who killed, thou who killed hundreds of Samoans. But this is Point not. So, Tavita, this, Tavita, we're not speaking I'm, on this. I'm comparing to but what's happening. But it's on our agenda I'm, coming up. Uh, so are bearing. you speaking in support of the resolution or I will opposition? be in support of this resolution because not only does the lives of Palestinians are at risk to this, this horrible outcome, the, the, there has been connections that I have made to other conflicts in the world that we have done. And not only just that, the Palestinian lives are in danger again. I have said this many times. And I, I, would like to, I would like a permanent ceasefire to be in place. So that's why I do support this motion. Thank you. Next up is Zach McGuckin, then Nagmana, then Andrew Cowley.
Hello, my name is Zachary McGuckin. I'm a member of the Party for Socialism and Liberation, and I was also on the drafting committee for this resolution. Um, I pushed for the resolution in its current state and support it and ask for you all to pass it, uh, not because it is perfect, but because it is the best that we could have gotten from the meetings as they were designed. Um, the uh, criticisms that I have of the resolution have mainly have already been stated. Uh, when it paints uh, the Palestinians and Hamas as the primary aggressors, whereas if you look through history, uh, when a people is occupied, their actions are inherently defensive. Um, and I just want to highlight some of the positives, uh, which is the call for a permanent uh, and lasting peace in Israel and Palestine. In my view, that goes, means a ceasefire, which I will want to recognize and thank Paul Dillon for calling for it. Um, but it goes beyond that because as long as there is colonial occupation, there will not be a lasting peace. The only way to achieve peace in the region is through freedom. Peace can't exist without the presence of freedom and justice. And so when uh, the support of peace is the support of the Palestinian cause, it's the support of freedom and justice for all Palestinians, which means freedom and justice for all Palestinians is equal, full equal democratic rights for all people in the region. And so I urge you all to vote yes and to stand in solidarity with uh, those suffering in Gaza and the West Bank and all of Palestine. Uh, Palestine will be free from all oppression and all genocide. Uh, and that's not a threat, that's a promise because colonialism can never win because all it, sto all it sows is instability, injustice, and uh, lack of dignity. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Nagamana Shirazi, then Andrew Cowley, then Megra Flatman. Go ahead, Nagamana, you're unmuted. My sincere condolences, Zach, on the passing of your grandmother. May she rest in peace. Thank you, everyone, for being here and for being here this late and for extending the time for the council meeting tonight. It has been very difficult listening to everybody and realizing that we made a resolution and then we amended it and yet we're still kind of lagging behind. I am very grateful to Zach Zappone, Council Member Zappone, to Council Member Bingo and to Council President Wilkerson for giving us that chance to make sure that so very many of us had a chance to have our say. I want to commend all my Jewish friends sitting in the, in the city ch council chambers right now. Um, I'm sorry I'm getting emotional again here, but this has been a very difficult process and a, a very difficult result because despite the fact that, you know, we wish things were different, um, we're still seeing, have, have still seen since October 7th, 25,000 people bombed and killed in, Israel, in, 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 in the Arab world. And I am, um, while I'm happy that we have a resolution that makes our city safe, safer, um, and I'm happy that we are going to continue education in very many different ways. I hope to collaborate with my Jewish brothers and sisters to be able to do that, and from the Muslim community, obviously, uh, because that is who I represent. But we do need to come together and make this city more inclusive than it has been. Uh, listening to some of the rhetoric earlier has really, really been very taxing. But I have hope. I have hope in this new city council. And I have hope that we are going to make strides in being more inclusive and being safer as a community and caring for our children the way we need to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nagma. Uh, Andrew Cowley, Megra Flatman, and then David Birkbank.
Hi, uh, my name is Andrew Cowley. I'm a member of the Party for Socialism and Liberation uh, from Spokane. Uh, I'm speaking in support of the new resolution and uh, the concern it expresses uh, for the lives of Palestinian civilians, uh, for the human rights to water, food, and electricity access, and its calls for federal and state officials uh, to work towards lasting peace in Palestine. Uh, the community uh, has demanded a new resolution uh, for the duration of Israel's current genocidal uh, assault on Gaza, that our local officials raise their voice against this nightmare, and we are glad that you are no longer silent. But it's important to recognize that all the deadly consequences of this genocidal war are the crimes of the Zionist settler state and its billion dollar sponsors, the American Empire. There is only one side in this war that has killed over 10,000 children, and there's also only one side that the taxpayers of Washington State pay $100 million to every year, and they're the same side. That's the side uh, that needs to be condemned, uh, but that being said, I uh, am thankful for the new resolution's uh, support that it gives to our Muslim and Jewish neighbors. That's a very good sign. Thank you. Thank you. The last three on my list are Megra Flatman, David Brookbank, and George Taylor. Go ahead, Megra. Um, October, thank you. October 9th, the resolution that preceded this one was unanimously, unanimously passed. It was a racist, one-sided amendment resolution that sparked an incredible amount of commentary decrying its contents. When you know better, you do better. And this resolution is exactly that. Taking in the incredible amount of public response, creating a panel that was actually inclusive and doing better. Thank you, Council Member Zapon and President Wilkerson for correcting October 9th's racist resolution. And thank you, Council Member Dillon, for publicly calling for a ceasefire. Page 367 states, quote, the city of Spokane is committed to ending the spread of hate, bigotry, and harassment. That's great. How? The Office of Civil Rights, Equity, and Inclusion, which promoting and fostering, quote, inclusivity, diversity, anti-racism, and belonging seem to fall under, had their funding slashed shortly after finally being staffed. Not even fully staffed, but just finally initially staffed after years. That needs to be corrected so there's capacity to do what this resolution is promising the City of Spokane wants to do. This resolution does not describe the precursor to October 7th attack. This attack was not genocide. Genocide is mass killing with the aim of destroying one nation. That actually more accurately describes the actions by Israel to Palestine. This resolution does not detail the generations of death and destruction suffered by Palestinians. It does focus on the inclusivity here in Spokane, because in Spokane, we all belong, and that's what's important. Thank you. Thank you. David Brookbank. Currently in Nicaragua. Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead, David. I want to point out that I do agree with the statements of Scott Ward and others acknowledging improvements in the new version. Likewise, I agree with those pointing out um, serious weaknesses. Um, I would like to say that I have little doubt that if the author of the original resolution could write it again uh, on that day, on October the 9th, the way that he wrote it, then it would be written that way um, again. I hope that this council would act differently than it did on that night of the ninth when it voted unanimously and with absolute silence in the face of that resolution. Um, and I think that the council, as I said earlier, owes the people of Spokane and itself to be a, a serious um, legislative body, a severe critical self-review of how that occurred and a report back on that review um, to the people of, of Spokane. This is an extraordinarily serious matter um, in terms of the misrepresentation of the facts in that original resolution. And um, I th it's still gone unacknowledged 
that uh, the council only council person who spoke on favor of that resolution that night provided a constituent letter with falsified information in it. That's unexcusable and um, also needs to be accounted for. Um, I'm, I'm again, I support the resolution um, with the reservations that others have made. I do believe that I did hear a speaker tonight essentially call for what Israel's some several of Israel's leaders have called for, which is the complete eradication of the po Palestinian population. That's extremely disturbing and suggests that those who have spoken about hatred and racism in our community are totally correct. Finally, um, I'd like to acknowledge that the resolution fails to acknowledge the role of Spokane, specifically Fairchild Air Force Base and the KC-135 aircrafts and personnel at Fairchild that are verifiably directly involved in the U.S. role in the crimes of Israel against the Palestinian people and in Palestine. Thank you. Thank you. George Taylor. Council, council member, Council President Wilkerson, thank you so much for your leadership in this, uh, this new resolution. I speak in support of it. My name is George Taylor. I'm a pastor at the All Saints Lutheran Church in Brown's Edition. Uh, Martin Luther King once said that an injustice to anyone is an injustice to everyone. Uh, in my own faith tradition, the scripture teaches that thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. One life taken in violence on, October, on the October 7th attack on Israel or in Gaza in the days and weeks following to this day is too many. The State of Israel reports 1,200 innocent civilians, including babies, very small babies, were taken, uh, were killed or hostage taken on October 7th. That is wrong. Since October 7th to this present day, the United Nations, not Hamas, reports 30,000 civilians killed, of which over 8,000 were children. And this is an undercount. Tonight, we had talked about uh, our shelterless uh, uh, people in Spokane, tonight, according to the United Nations, 1.9 million Palestinians have no place to lay their head. The United Nations, uh, they have been displaced and, and moved south and are still bombed there. This council chose by unanimous vote to weigh in on this issue, and I commend you for that, because some speakers tonight ha have said, this issue doesn't affect Spokane. Of course it affects Spokane. Everything that happens affects Spokane. I was taught to act local, think global. Everything is connected. I am glad that the council is reflecting more deeply on this very complicated issue and continues to provide leadership on it in this more balanced resolution. Please vote yes. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes testimony. Council commentary? Councilmember Bingo. All right. So <clears throat> I really wanted to vote for this tonight uh, because I think that there are really special moments in there. I'm thinking specifically of when um, Sandy and Aslan were tearfully embracing each other, and I thought that was a really beautiful moment. Um, I thought that there was um, a, a lot of areas where uh, people came to the middle. But hearing a lot of the testimony tonight sort of really made me angry in a lot of ways, and I want to say why. So we heard testimony from a number of folks who said, by the way, the things that we say matter in blanket groups about statements causes Islamophobia and anti-Semitism. And tonight, what we heard was a lot of blanket statements about Israel being a genocidal, apartheid, settler colonial, ethnic cleansing government. And if that is not an ironic statement in saying, don't make blanket statements about groups because it causes hate, and then making blanket group, uh, blanket statements about groups. I don't know what it is. Um, it's really frustrating for me uh, when I hear that uh, as long as there is colonial occupation, there will be no peace. So calling for a permanent peace and 
there can be no peace without colonial occupation logically means that we expel the Jews from that area, if that's what you're asking for. If colonial, you're calling, you're calling Israel. Please. Point of order. Point yes. of order. Thank you. Point of order. Point, yes. Mm -hmm. Council is now having commentary. The audience has had the opportunity to speak. Mm -hmm. By saying that the government of Israel is a settler colonial government, you are accusing them of being settler colonials. And then you say there can be no peace with colonial occupation. The only logical outcome there is to expel the Jews, which is exactly what Hamas calls for. Uh, also said that there can be, uh, that there needs to be full, equal democratic representation for all people in the region. There are 10 uh, Muslims in the Israeli Knesset. How many Jews are in the government of Palestine? No it's response, easy. please. Yeah, it's, it's a rhetorical question because it's zero. And so when we're calling for these things, the things that you're calling for are ironic in, in so many ways. I'm so frustrated by the testimony that came in. We support this except for, here's all the ways Israel is bad. We support this except for, Israel is a genocidal government. We ex support this except for their settler. We support except for the apartheid. I just, I'm so disappointed by the people who came to, to speak in this tonight because I think it undoes a lot of the work that was tried to be accomplished in that space. I'm disappointed to say the least, and uh, at, at this point, um, despite the best of intentions there, I'm, I'm incredibly frustrated by what happened tonight. I'll be voting against, and uh, I will continue to say that um, in my statements there, that uh, I'm incredibly proud of the October 7th resolution. I stand by every word. Um, last thing I'll say about this, we keep saying taxpayers are funding the war to the tune of $100 million in the city of Spokane at $3.5 million. We've combed over the budget. We're not giving any money to Israel uh, specifically for, uh, for war. So, um, uh, yeah, I came in hopeful for it tonight, but uh, I'll be voting against. Thank you. Any other council commentary? You go. Yeah. Uh, I just want to really give a thanks to all the community members that participated and spent hours and hours and hours on this, uh, both tonight and in the meetings and in between meetings, meeting um, and talking to lots of community members. So really big appreciation for you all. And um, I'm, I, I know that there were a lot of hard conversations, a lot of hard moments, and people still came back. And we heard that tonight. And so uh, I want to appreciate all of you for that. I also want to acknowledge that I don't think that we were perfect in the way that we ran those meetings, and we learned a lot throughout that process too. And so I want to thank you all for your grace giving to us uh, and us as council members right now and learning on our process of how to do the, to be better, I guess, uh, and bringing diverse people together too. And um, hopefully that we can build upon this throughout the city of Spokane uh, on bringing people together because as was mentioned, um, Going in and, and throughout the conversation, there were a lot of confrontations, and I think that uh, we built some bridges across those divides, and hopefully those will continue, as Aslan said earlier today, uh, looking forward to continuing those friendships or relationships that were built in that process. So I want to thank you all. Um, I think regardless of what people testified here tonight, this resolution and what it says is what we're voting on, and I think that... Um, I, I agree with everything that's in here. It's not exactly what I would want either, but that is a, the process of getting a lot of people to agree on something together. There's a lot of compromise. And so it's not what I would say or how I would say it either, but I don't think any one person, it's how they would say it. So I appreciate the process and that we got to a point that everyone could agree. And I think that it does make a statement to our community. Um, and I, I, I understand your frustrations, Council Member Bingle, but I think if you look back to the resolution, which is what we're voting on, we're not voting on people's comments, I think you would find you do agree with it. And so I'd encourage you to show symbolism to our community that we're all behind this resolution. Councilmember Dillon. Yeah, um, I'd just like to commend uh, Council President Wilkerson, uh, Councilmember Bingle, and Councilmember Zippone for um, all their work in, in crafting this. And um, I do... Yeah, understand uh, Councilmember Bingle's comments on you know blanket statements. I think often there's a difference between uh, perhaps what you know where government and people 
align and and comments made and I think that sometimes the two get conflated instead of uh, differentiated and there's a, a New York Times story that came out yesterday about how you know four military leaders inside of uh, Israel said that freeing the hostages and continuing uh, this war are mutually incompatible um, that we are going to be drawn into a future conflict uh, with no end and thinking about that and kind of the impetus of why I, I support uh, ceasefire and um, was happy to see the language in here about a, a sustained uh, longing piece in addition to really the focus of this resolution of uh, welcoming inclusivity, denouncing anti-Semitism and Islamophobia. Um, but uh, the impacts of violence and uh, regional destabilization, um, which is, I think is a, a very heightened global concern. Um, that's not something that we can exactly address here, um, but in the feedback that I've gotten from folks, um, I had somebody who's um, Jewish and an Arab and said, I, it's hard for me to see myself in this conflict, um, but empathy cannot be selective. And I always think about that. Empathy cannot be selective. Um, I don't think that uh, wanting innocent civilians to die um, should be considered a radical position. Um, and I think it's on all of us uh, to make sure that everyone here in Spokane, um, this is their home. Council Member Klitsky. Thank you. I agree with Council Member Dillon, and I'm also personally in support of a ceasefire, but it's, it's evident here that um, this was some really good work um, people, as Liz Moore said, were very human in this process and trying to hold empathy for each other. And I think we're doing that work right now, having empathy for the victims of this situation. And um, I also um, think it was a really great point to bring up avoiding absolutisms. Um, I think that really speaks to the difference between a people and a government, the difference between politics and like civilians living their everyday lives. So um, in respect to that and um, the, the fact that folks were banding about the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King's name, I, I do want to remind everybody that he was nonviolent. He was very adamantly nonviolent. And he said, darkness cannot defeat darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot defeat hate. Only love can do that. And I, I see that you folks came together and you tried to bring that to the table. And I support this imperfect resolution. And um, it, it doesn't necessarily matter what my, I think or my position is. This was good work, and I want to honor that. I'll just echo that. I had the opportunity to sit in those meetings, first of all, to educate myself on what was going on because I did not have a good understanding. So I hope we will continue to do that and to sit in that room with trauma from both sides of the argument, and even the trauma tonight that's in this room from the testimony that has gone forward. Thank everybody who's been able to stay in here and work through that, because really, we want our citizens in Spokane to be safe, and we understand, and we are not perfect, but I was encouraged that a group of people came together to work through this, and I heard there were some people who wished they had been invited. You know, we don't know who we don't know. And as we continue to grow our community, I look forward to those people becoming more engaged in these conversations. But this actually gives me hope for Spokane because we have some more difficult conversations to have and that we can all stay in the same room and hash it out. And it took several meetings and we came to a level of agreement and nobody got everything they wanted in this resolution. I think they could all attest to that. But when we left that space, this is what we agreed on. So with that being said, I am in support of this tonight. Are we ready to vote? Thank you. 
Thank you, everybody, for that. On to resolution 2024-10. Resolution 2024-10 regarding the appointment of blank to fill the vacancy in Spokane City Council District 2, position 2. Council President, there's one individual signed up to testify on this item. That's justice for all. Justice? There was some, uh, my name is Justice Frost, Spokane resident. There were some fantastic uh, people who applied for this uh, position, um, but I want to say you definitely chose the best one. Thank you. Any council, that? any council commentary? We, we need a motion to fill we, in the blank. We need a motion. Uh, for the appointment of Lily Navarrete to fill the vacancy. You want to read it, Ms. Fister? Um, yeah, I'll make a motion to appoint Lily Navarrete to yeah. Spokane City Council. Okay. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. Now any council commentary? Yeah, um, I just want to be uh, really clear, and thank you, uh, Lily, for sticking it out later, Council Member Navarrete, I should, uh, should say. And Do you still want the job? Yeah. <laughs> <I'm just kidding>. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, I, I really appreciate, um, you know, your, your application, uh, your interview. We had a really strong uh, list of, of applicants uh, that came through, um, and I'm really excited to, to have a seat mate. Um, you know, I think that we all had a, a really good uh, del deliberation um, on all the candidates, um, and I look forward to, to moving this forward. Council Member Zappone. Yeah, I'll say I'm very much looking forward to working with Council Member Navarrete in that um, there was definitely very qualified, very excited, very focused on lots of goals to work on in the next two years and maybe beyond. Um, but not only that, but tons of community support and listening to our, our community individuals and organizations that uh, wrote in and testified in support. And uh, it's clear that you have a lot of community support and will represent lots of diverse perspectives up here. Um, and I believe that you will continue to do lots of outreach to our community, not just those that support you. And so I'm excited to keep working with you and um, know that we'll have lots of new adventures up here. Okay. You have the council commentary? I'll just say I'm excited as well. Someone who will continue to represent East Central uh, with the passion who lives in that neighborhood. We did have a group of amazing applicants for District 2. And it really was a difficult decision. And any of them could have done a good job representing District 2. But Lily did rise to the top uh, with her application, her interview. She not only talked about uh, District 2, but about District 1 and the populations uh, that we serve the same people. And so her interest was citywide and the community support. We are absolutely honored to have you join us. And I'm like Council Member Dillon, if you still want the job, uh, we haven't had a meeting this late for a long time. So uh, any other commentary? Do we need a voice vote or a vote? Be prepared to vote. Um, voice vote on the amendment. The amendment. Oh. oh. Yeah. Um, so I put forth the motion uh, to appoint Lily Navarrete to Spokane City Council. Did you second that, Council Member Zappone? Yep. Yes. So moved and seconded. For the substitution, right? For mm -hmm. the substitution, yes. All right. All those in favor? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Any opposed? Aye. 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 Now we vote on the resolution. Now we're voting. Prepare to vote. Thank you, everyone. First reading ordinances. First reading ordinances, Ms. Oh Fister, please. Ordinance C36483 relating to water amending section 13.04.2017 to chapter 13.04 of the Spokane Municipal Code and setting an effective date relates to golf course irrigation conservation rate. Ordinance C36484 relating to the establishment of a process to consider and act upon community members' concerns regarding city-owned property, adopting a new chapter 18.10 to title 18 of the Spokane Municipal Code. 
and Ordinance C-36485 relating to the regulation of special events and establishing, processes, pro, establishing a process allowing for expanded events amending Section 10.39.040D of the Spokane Municipal Code for their action as deferred on re first reading ordinances. Council President, there are three people signed up to testify. Justice for all, Dennis Flynn and Megra Flatman. Justice. Uh, 484 is part of this. Yep. Go ahead, Dennis. Hey, City Council. Dennis Flynn. I live near St. Charles. Um, I see that there was zero effort uh, input into making this ordinance more worthy than it was when it was first introduced seven months ago. Um, when I asked you to reject this obtuse addition to the code as written and send it back to be rewritten, I'm not against this ordinance. I'm, against, I'm for having efficient, well thought out, documentable, followable processes in our code. And this is so poorly written that it would be best be served by sending it back for a complete rewrite. And I volunteer to assist if desired. I sent you examples back in June when it first came up and I can either resend those or I will, again, volunteer to help you. Uh, code should be clear, concise, and stand the test of time. This ordinance does not clearly use any of its own language that it tries to define in it. it, it the, the word community member includes people outside the city. It doesn't make any sense. Concern, the word concern is defined with a complete mashup that is subjective, inappropriate for municipal code. The word request, this needs to be a formalized form. The submission process must be formalized as well so that if somebody objects to it, they have a method of following it through the process. The HRC, everything, and I know that the name changed, I thought I heard tonight. Everything after the semicolon needs to be removed. There's no reason to redefine what the council is within this new section of code. Uh, the, the process, the wording, the current wording is an obtuse word salad mix. It doesn't even use the words that are defined in the previous section, which is the whole point of making the definitions to use in the process. Um, subsection A should be changed to a community member shall submit a request to the SHRC to review the concern. And subsection B should be changed to the SHRC shall task the work group as its designee to process the request. Again, these are words that defined in the previous section. And subsection C, the work group shall determine if the request is submitted by a valid community member and includes a valid concern. Concern, community member, request, words that are defined in the statute itself. Again, I'd volunteer to work with uh, my council representatives uh, up in the Shadle, Audubon, uh, Driscoll area if anybody wants me to. I'd be glad to re-email the edits that I did before. Um, this is a first reading, so we have lots of opportunity to fix this code. This doesn't belong in the municipal code as it's written. Thank you. Thank you. Megra. <coughs> Go ahead, Megra. You're, you're unmuted. Thank you. Golf courses are terrible for the environment, and they should not be subsidized. They use obscene amounts of water, as well as chemicals for fertilizer. The Spokane Parks Board Golf Committee's 2022 almost quarter million dollar request for, quote, various turf chemicals shows the incredibly high amount needed to maintain these monoculture wastelands. The Environmental Journal published an article about the dispersal of pesticides and the persistence of these pollutants in the environment. 95% of herbicides eventually reach a destination other than their target, which means almost all of these poisonous chemicals do not remain on the golf courses that they are initially sprayed on, but they diffuse into the environment and they kill as they travel. Glyphosate, according to the Environmental Working Group, is cancer-causing, and it's being sprayed on city golf courses before it spreads further past the golf courses by leaching into the ground or with water runoff. Page 428 of the agenda under the section describing impacts on historically excluded communities says, quote, we recognize the need to maintain affordability and predictability for utility customers. Maintain affordability for who? <laughs> the biggest users of golf courses are wealthier, white, and retired. There is no connection to historically excluded communities and framing this public works project as, quote, designed to serve all citizens and businesses is incredibly misleading. 
The agenda continues that this work is, quote, both financially and environmentally responsible. That's a lie. Subsidizing such a wasteful sport that poisons the environment causes cancer. And not just on the course, but everywhere is not environmentally responsible in any way, shape, or form. The people using golf courses are not the average citizen, but that's whose money you're taking to fund our own poisoning. You're poisoning us and you're asking us to pay money so the people poisoning us don't have to. Um, C36484 referring to the historically, ah, uh, sorry. Um, establishing a review of community concerns regarding institutional statements, names, or monuments. That's incredibly important. This passed last year and then Mayor Woodward vetoed it. This was mostly because of the statue that not only includes racial slurs, but it upholds someone who's a veteran, but it doesn't honor him for being a veteran. It honors him for killing savages, but that's not what happened. What happened was these people were invaded by people white people who attacked them. Thank you, we Megra. attacked them. Your time is up. Thank you. Okay. That's it. That's it. And now you're going to request a motion to adjourn. Motion right. to adjourn. I move to adjourn. It's been moved to second. Second. To, to adjourn. <laughs> All those in favor of adjournment indicate by saying aye. 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 Any no's? We are adjourned. Thank everyone for staying tonight. I think I got you. Mm -hmm.